I just type an R, I mean, I should pop up. Okay. <laughs> That's me right there, I'm famous and I'm sorry. It looks like you're losing a lot of subscribers. <laughs> Actually, before this video came out, you were gaining subscribers back, and this was a point I wanted to bring up in my original video on the subject. If you just took the criticism you were dealt and didn't make a big deal out of it, you wouldn't be back in the downward spiral in your own words. In fact, I want to point out at the time of me scripting this, you have more subs than your actual video. Yeah, you're losing subs now, but that's after your video came out. You were getting your subs back. What? <laughs> no, don't jump. You still have a lot to live for. If you guys are unaware, I dubs dropped the content cop on me. In the video, he portrays me as like this money hungry, I only care about money, I only care about fame and myself, and I'm very boastful and bragging and flexing to everyone. Money, money, money. And ever since he dropped that video, I've been getting a ton of hate. I've been seeing comments like, Rice, it's over. You can't come back after this. Just give up. There's no point. And even if that was the case, and even if it was over, my career is over, like, I owe it to my true fans to just put up a fight. I can't just sit here and not reply. So well, actually, you could. You could be the bigger man to make it seem like you're not affected by it. Or you could have if you just didn't make that stupid reaction video stealing your fate. I'm not saying I need a month to make a response. I'm just saying, like, give me, like, a day or two to come up with something, but, like, Cocaine is a hell of a drug. With that being said, there's a lot of things I want to talk about, and since he made a diss track, I mean, that's kind of what I started and, you know, kind of what I do. He kind of, like, stole that from me. So I feel like it's okay that I can, you know, steal the way he structures his videos. Why the hell would you use a Sharangan eye for this? This isn't really a point, this is just something that's weird to me. So ever since he dropped his Rice Gum Exposed video or whatever, I've been losing subs, getting dislikes, everyone's saying my career has fallen off, all this. I've already stated that you were getting those subs back in until this video, but your dislikes on your videos, well, let's take your reaction video for the content cop. Money, money, money. You practically wasted everyone's time with it, and didn't bother to make anything out of it other than a poor cash grab. Now, that's just my subjective opinion. Others may view it as a comedy skit, while I can see the elements in it for it, I didn't find it funny. This isn't the end-all be-all as to why you're getting dislikes, everyone can dislike a video for whatever reason they choose. And I don't know why people disliked it. I can't read minds. Yet. This stuff, and funny enough, I'm the one that asked for this. You would think I'm like kind of scared, trying to lay low a little bit, but no, guys, like I'm not nervous, I'm not scared at all. I actually kind of, I, I don't really. I made that video a year ago when YouTube was like dead, and I was just trying to stir up some controversy. And you make it sound like it's a good thing. Wow. But it's about time, man. You know, it took a year, but I finally got my content cut. No, but all seriousness, it was a really good video. I mean, you gotta give credit where credit is due. The purpose of a YouTube video is to be funny and entertaining. The video was funny and entertaining. It was really long. He did his research. He put a lot of time in. He got PewDiePie. There was a dish track. He just really went hard, and you just gotta give him props for it. 20 minutes later. This guy is literally in love with me. He is obsessed with me. Get off of my dick, bruh. I'm the one that asked for this. He, he is obsessed with me. I'm the one that asked for this. I'm the one that asked for this. Soka. Seriously, what's with the Naruto images? I get the cute girls for the segment, but... Yeesh. At the start of his video, right, his first main point, the first thing he talks about, right, he could've easily put this at the end of the video, but you know, some people might not watch the full video, right? So he made sure to put this at the start of the video so everyone sees it, right? Well, that was extremely repetitive. You should show the clip of you saying the rape comment. Guys, I literally cringe every time I watch this, but the thing is, like, this is kind of old news. Like, I remember I was getting roasted for this, like, a year ago. I hate some people because they do stuff like this. Because he laughed at a rape victim. Exposing rice gum for mocking a girl who was raped. Him making fun of the rape victim on stream. But just in case you don't, Here's the clip. Another small nitpick, but lovely fact checking you have there. Elvis' video was made in 2016, not 17, so this is the editing of an 8 million sub channel. Huh. Secondly, no duh he brought up, because in your original video talking about your supposed wanting of a contact cop, you brought up your past of Goofy Kid as a means of what you were expecting iDubs to bring up. He was critiquing your choice of that. And just because it was over a year ago, that doesn't mean that you're absolved from the criticism of it. Especially since what you did afterwards was dubious. Trying to pass the buck off onto Onision. You know. And let's uh, take it out of context and, you know, cut out all the good parts and let's just make him look as bad as possible. So, that, so that's exactly what he did. He posted this. Which ironically is what you do in this video. Not apologizing until you were called out and even putting five ads on your long apology video that wasn't even on your main channel. Now that I think about it, there are five ads on this video too. This isn't something new and I get why other YouTubers you know, may be offended because they might, you know, really take this rape thing seriously and it is serious, but out of everyone, I should not be the one calling me out. Stopping you. Right there, since what Ricegum does next is show off tweets from iDubs, but let's look towards his Twitter screen capture. 
Wow, you are really cherry picking here, because frankly, anyone who's looking at the screen right now can tell that the majority of these are actually done responses. But obviously, we're missing out on a lot of context here with the tweets. Considering the number of tweets there are on iDub's Twitter, it's not impossible to get context for most of these. Except for one. So the context is this. Idubs, he does this because he's an internet predator also known as a sex devon. Lovely spelling. And then we get to Idubs' response that you show. Oh, would you look at that? He's playing along with the joke. I'm sure there's a lot more context out there for these tweets, but a majority of the tweets are obviously jokes, and not the actual expense of victims. Whereas your joke, Rice, it was in response to her telling you of the traumatic event. Not to mention, you also revealed her location at the time. Wait, are you in college? Yeah. What college? <clears throat> uh, Portland State. Idub's jokes were made to playing along with the jokes, or obviously being doing it for shock value, not directed at a victim. <laughs> Like, if she's not mad, why are you guys mad? Because you didn't apologize until you were called out! <laughs> if this apology of yours came up before you were called out, then yeah, people calling out would be dumb. But that's not what happened, now is it? I just took it as a joke, you know, I, I should have been more mature and... I feel bad because not to just you though, just to all the rape victims out there and just like it wasn't funny, you know what I mean? And, and I just don't feel bad. Wow. You may want to get a refund for those acting classes, Rice. Now let me say this, it is good that she accepted your apology. It's nice that she didn't take offense to why your insensitivity and lack of common sense. However, you seem to think that's what people are criticizing you solely for. I already stated that your late apology and how you went about it are what a part of it, but another issue is that your flawed character remains and can still be criticized. <laughs> It's official, I'm gonna call you a Narutard now. This is what I live for, man. This I believe it! Hey, I think it's an improvement. He shows a lot of like old livestream clips from like two to three years ago, and at this point it's getting annoying, man. I just need to talk about it. So I used to live stream on this website like two to three years ago, and on that website basically all it was was just people that played video games and they were live streaming. And honestly, it was kind of boring because everyone did the same thing. They sat there and just played video games. And being a small content creator, I mean you guys know it's so hard to grow, you know, starting out. So you have to be different. I can Oh, is that what you decided to view bot? Let me check this out. Boom! <laughs> right there. <laughs> not know what this is but this right here is a viewbot control panel I either sit there and play games and you know be boring or i could sit there play games and just call random girls and make people laugh and that's exactly what i did yeah that's nice but that wasn't the point of him showing your clips the point was that you were recording people without the permission no but i'm not streaming though i just wanted to call you oh you're not no i know i just wanted to call you and just talk I'm not live right now, right? No, no, no. Basically, we were just chilling on Amigo. She didn't know that I was live to 3,000 people. <laughs> That's why he showed that. Not that you were a Twitch streamer and made cringy content, but you did some really stupid stuff that ended up being hypocritical on your part and a later point in his video. <laughs> I make is two years ago. I had that high school humor. I, I was young. I was just making stupid jokes, but I understand why people got offended because people take offense to different things. I'm sorry for all the shit I was saying two years ago. How I saw it was like this was just the content I had to make to work my way to the top. I'm not ashamed of any of these old clips because I mean this was me back in high school. No, but I'm not streaming though. I just wanted to call you. Oh, you're not? No, I know. I just wanted to call you and just talk. No, 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 no. I already explained why this wasn't why he showed the clips. It was for. content that no one gets to see and I feel like we should go back and check out some of iDub's old videos because I mean who knows I mean let's go to his YouTube channel and let's check out his first YouTube video here we go right here first YouTube video boom hello everyone and welcome back to more Kickstarter crap wait a minute he just said welcome back from where this is his first video does that mean he deleted his first video I remember he made a lot of jokes about Leafy being insecure because he was hiding his chin so he was like insecure about his chin but like I thought he was just throwing up gang size you see because if you're a pussy and you're hiding your putrid malformed chin behind your hand you're showing people that you are extremely self-conscious so apparently he's insecure because he's hiding his chin which makes a lot of sense but like is items deleting his videos hiding something from us because he's insecure about his old videos 
Oh, hey, I see a similar point to what Leapy did. And you could have looked for the Cyber Matrix series. That would have been much more hard-hitting in a video than playing Slenderman Gangnam Style. Idubs mocks his own content. A cringy Slenderman Gangnam Style video. You like Slenderman Gangnam Style, dude? That's what he does. Also, here's a clip from the random shark who does another point that I think is better done in his own words. He's insecure about his old video? And that everyone changes as a person. I'm not bringing up all these old clips to make him look bad. I'm just gonna say everyone changes as a person, and as a content creator, your content is gonna change with your personality, right? And while I agree with this sentiment that people change over time, and that iDubs has certainly shifted his persona as he's gotten more comfortable with himself as a creator, any and all points Ricegum may have made in this section are pretty much null and void because of a statement that he makes later on in the video. How are you gonna tell me who I am as a person? As if you f***ing know me! Get off of my dick! So if iDubs can't make assumptions about your content, seems a bit hypocritical and moronic to make assumptions about why he got rid of his older videos. And chances are, it had less to do with insecurity and more to do with a huge shift in genre, considering he decided to make an entire channel dedicated to games instead of continuing it on his main. Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of GTA 5. Today we'll be looking at a few different mods. So if you're gonna hate on me for who I was two years ago, just unsubscribe because you know damn well you're not the same person you were two years ago. Well, I haven't heard something like that since. There's, you got, you're a disgusting person if you're cheating, hacking, and you don't belong in Pokemon, you don't belong making these... NEVER AGAIN! So another main point that iDubs made it, it seemed like it really bothered him, but apparently I flex too much. Money, money, money. Flex too much. He will often flex in his music videos. Nice twenties, I need blue on my bills. Wrist looking like the fifty bands. I'm gonna flex on my wrist. Okay, I know I'm not an A-list rapper, but if you're gonna get mad at me for flexing in a song, then you need to get mad at the whole world in hip hop because everyone does it. Eight hundred dollar off white. Three thousand dollars. Four hundred and fifty dollars. A thousand. One thousand dollars. One like three thousand dollars. Okay, so all those clips were gathered in a span of two years, which means I don't really have to sit there and watch all my videos. So thanks for the view, bro. Well, you show that he wasn't just talking about your music videos and you decide to just ignore that and say, lols, thanks for the views, bros. Brilliant! Brilliant! Also, that's really generalizing of rap, you know. Not every rap song or rap artist is flexing about what they own and what they are showing off in their videos. <laughs> personal preferences, there's probably someone out there that will match your personal preference, so go watch someone else. I think that's a perfectly fair statement, but you shouldn't preface it by saying, Guys, I'm not showing off I'm rich. These are just things that I do on an everyday basis. You absolutely are showing off. Just fucking own it. If you're showing off, you're showing off. Okay, you know what? Maybe he has a point. Maybe I do flex a lot, and I can see why people might find this annoying. So, you just admitted to flexing a lot. What the hell was the point of the last few minutes? Folks, they just did not care. But before you guys hate on me, I'm sorry, but like, put yourself in my shoes. Imagine growing up and going to school and seeing all your friends have these cool stuff, and you know, you kind of want that stuff too, but at the time, you didn't have enough money. Okay, you know, I'm not actually going to believe you, because contrary to what you say, you were born and raised in Las Vegas. You admitted to having turned down Harvard scholarships, and not to mention that you were paying for views on Twitch. Not know what this is, but this right here is a Viewbot control panel. Gotcha, bitch. You have to regain me because I don't believe what you just said. And one day I decided, you know what, I'm tired of being broke, let's try to get rich, you know? So I sat in my room and made some, you know, live stream stuff, and you know, I really didn't get paid a lot. I was grinding, but, and I didn't get paid a lot at the time, and then somehow I started doing YouTube, and you know, I was getting paid through YouTube, and next thing you know, I'm moving out of my parents' house, I'm living in LA. It all happened so fast, and I just started buying all this stupid stuff and just started flexing, and I mean, I'm not sorry for it, because this is my money, and I'll spend it however the f I want. I don't tell you guys how to spend your money. I'm gonna continue to buy all these nice things, I mean, that's just what I'm gonna do, but like, I'm not delusional, you know? I'll take some constructive criticism. No, you cannot. You cannot take criticism. Most of this video thus far is you dodging the criticism that's been leveled at you or ignoring it. So now I know that, like, not everything I buy has to be shown off and announced. Like, look, guys, you know, not everything I buy has to be that way, you know? Most of the people don't even care, and I'll just keep that information to myself because, like, why am I even flexing on the people that put money in my pocket? Please, kill me. Here it is! 
the topic of stretching videos out to the 10 minute mark for the sake of more ad revenue, you just stretch your outro out, three minutes long, four minutes long, that's fucking retarded. I love you guys, subscribe if you're new, comment, I read all comments, and now I try to make this video somehow 10 minutes. Okay, I've only done this like a handful of times, right? I'm sorry, I guess, but like, I kind of learned this from like my favorite YouTuber. Even though I'm not moving, but it does- Yeah, and? You make it seem like it's alright for PewDiePie to do it. It's not. If you have to extend the length of a video just to reach the 10 minute mark, then there are plenty of ways to do it without having a cheap and lazy route. Bloopers, announcements, hell, maybe even try something new. Just because PewDiePie doesn't, that doesn't make it right. Hell, I had to go to the age-old question, if PewDiePie jumped off a bridge, would you do it? <laughs> And like, holy hell, you really are stretching out those videos with all these clips. There's nothing wrong with examples, but holy hell, you don't need to include every single clip like that you need. Just give us one example, and bam, you're done! You are making your video into a bloated mess to the point that it matches the size of your ego. I find this pretty ironic that your friend and someone that was in the video roasting me is someone that does it more than anyone on YouTube. So if we're gonna call anyone out on it, call out PewDiePie, but you probably won't because you're a dick writer. I'm the one that asked for this. Uh-huh. And what makes you think that he does approve of PewDiePie doing it? I don't often speak on the topic of stretching videos out to the 10 minute mark for the sake of more ad revenue, particularly with the ad apocalypse stuff going on. If that's some people's hustle, no problem with it. The also, this isn't PewDiePie's point, it's iDubbbz. If PewDiePie was making it, then hey, you'd actually have a legitimate criticism. But here, do you? No, 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 no. You are basically doing a non sequitur. You're trying to dismiss the argument on something that iDubbbz does not do. Plus, once again, we don't know if he actually does approve PewDiePie doing it or not. Jojo is better, you wanna be weeb. Do you understand? <laughs> All those guys that are irrelevant now, but hey, irrelevant. Irrelevant! You're irrelevant. Because they're irrelevant! Gabby Show, another pretty irrelevant YouTuber. Damn, I guess I do say that word a lot. I mean, I guess I'll learn some new. This frame is a clear indication that they just didn't care. My god, I can't believe I had to repeat myself, but that wasn't the point! You were calling out YouTubers who were involved in the rewind, and you were slamming them because you weren't. That's what iDub's point was. One thing that he's very disingenuous about is when he states that all of his videos are jokes. All of my videos are jokes. A lot of people don't understand this. People get actually mad at me like, yo, relax. All my videos are jokes. It's just for fun. I have no beef against this kid. No, they're not. And it's very obvious to anyone who watches your videos that they're not all jokes. You're not playing a character. All right, that is you. You are being yourself in these videos. How are you going to tell me who I am as a person? As if you know me. Get off of my dick. So if iDubs can't make assumptions about your content, seems a bit hypocritical and moronic to make assumptions about why he got rid of his older videos. You guys like to hear the juiciest bit of hypocrisy? This girl literally came up to me in person, didn't ask me, Hey Rice, do you mind if I vlog? She just came up to me, camera already on, and I was so unexpected. It kind of sounds like he doesn't like being recorded without his consent. How interesting. So basically, he's calling me a hypocrite because I don't like to be filmed without consent, but then again, I film other people. Yeah, you didn't ask them for permission. iDub shows the girls who get mad at you for not getting their permission to do so in a private setting. You know what's funny? The clip you show right after this proves that you straight up lied to a girl about that, you hack. I'm not streaming though, I just wanted to call you. Oh, you're not? No, I know, I just wanted to call you and just- They, they just, just didn't care. care. But bro, there's a difference, all right? Like, coming up to someone and filming them and then, you know, me being like, yo, could you not? And they keep going it's completely different from me two years ago you know live streaming and someone asked me am i live and i'm just like no just so they're just more natural because as soon as they know they're live they're gonna start acting weird and all awkward and i just thought it'd be funny if they're just more natural but filming someone without consent was something i did two years ago i'm sorry you know my bad i won't do it ever again <laughs> The 
The only difference is that you went up to them, lied to them, and proceeded to record them without them knowing. It doesn't matter if you think it's more natural, you're actively lying to people about it. You're recording them without their consent. Videotaping a conversation with another person who is unaware you intend to record the conversation and then distributing that recorded conversation to third parties, which is what Twitch is, could subject you to a possible invasion of privacy lawsuit, given a reasonable expectation of privacy where the individual is recorded. This is especially true because, if I remember correctly, you say you live in Nevada, which, you know, is even worse because, considering the time frame, I'm guessing you live in Nevada. Because, guess what? Both parties need a consent to have a private conversation actually be viewable to a third party. Because it's actually illegal. I'm not sure if it goes for Skype or not, but... or whatever you use to actually record. But it's still something I need to point out. However, Idos actually knows a lot about filming people without consent. <laughs> Let's see how many, let's see what my monthly earnings are. Oh, over a fucking million? Hell yeah. Yeah, that's right. Me and I dubs were in the same room and he obviously doesn't like me because he's over here zooming in talking shit. But like, if you don't like me that much to be, you know, talking shit without me knowing and then talking shit online, at least come up to me and say it to my face. Look, I don't know the context of these locations. For all I know, they could be public. I mean, one's a convention. That really all depends on the convention rules. But there's one thing you're forgetting here, ricey boy. Idubs didn't smash someone's phone. That was the point of his segment. You smash someone's property, which can also be against the law. Destruction of private property. So congratulations. Way to miss the point of the segment. Went straight over your head. I don't think there's ever been a better way to inflate your own ego than fabricating your own genius video so you have an excuse to explain your lyrics. Yo, what up? It's your boy Rice. This isn't a joke. This is a real thing. Alright, man. I'll give it to him. He made a lot of valid points throughout his video, right? But what? Are you really criticizing me for making a parody? You make it sound like parodies can't be critiqued. I was gonna explain my lyrics regardless, you know, I didn't do this parody to, you know, prove I'm a real rapper, you know, I just wanted to explain my lyrics, and I knew if I edited, you know, pretty professionally, it could look cool, and it turned out pretty good. I feel like this dude is just hating on me at this point, just to hate on me. Wow, way to cut yourself off. Then again, with all the zoom cameras and jump cuts and the editing errors, what was I expecting from a channel that makes thousands upon thousands of dollars per video and over 8 million subscribers? <laughs> But since I know this is like my biggest fan ever, I mean, he remembers everything. I guess I owe someone 10k. But a lot of people are saying my career is over, I'm falling off, you know, after the kind of cop, things won't be the same because I'm just going down and I'm getting kind of worried. Like, what if that's true and that 10k might come in handy 20 years down the line? Money, 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 oh, I'm so sorry. Doesn't negate the fact your skill squelched out on doing something. And if you're so worried about money, stop burning it on random stuff that you don't need! I know there's gonna be that one guy like, Oh my god, Rice, what the- Give someone 10k, you- Boy, you- you didn't even do the challenge. Your editing sucks. Also, what if the guy who actually won shows up? You gonna tell him that? It is not a coincidence that your music has improved since moving to LA. You're now utilizing a professional music studio where someone else is mixing and mastering all your music. Okay, what? Is this really a point you're making? You realize that most artists out there utilize a professional studio to make themselves sound better? Are you not able to speak in a coherent sentence? You keep cutting yourself off and your jump cuts are annoying. You have someone who's filming all the videos for you. Wait, what? You're calling me out for using a cameraman? Like, I'm sorry, I need to hire someone to film for me, I mean, I can't vlog my- WARNING! BULLSHITTER ALERT! Why don't you let him finish making his points? You're just jumping in randomly to cut him off. And I know someone's gonna be saying that I'm doing the same thing, especially here. Fine, whatever, but that doesn't negate the fact that he's not addressing the criticism and essentially cutting off what iDubs is saying and getting to his point. I can't vlog my own music video. Like, what do you want me to do? Film my own music video? Like, how is that even possible? This rule of thumb is particularly helpful when you're filming yourself because no one will be behind the camera to keep an eye on things while the camera is rolling. and like react to it and respond to everything he said but like bro this is so boring uh. 
God. No, but in all seriousness, it was a really good video. I mean, you gotta give credit where credit is due. The purpose of a YouTube video is to be funny and entertaining. The video was funny and entertaining. Was, bro, this is so boring. The video was funny and entertaining. Was, bro, this is so boring. The video was funny and entertaining. Was, bro, this is so boring. The video was funny and entertaining. Was, And I'm done. You want to know something? For something that's labeled a diss track, there was only about 15 seconds of a diss track after this segment. More than likely, this video will be out after his official diss track, and well, this video sucked. Do you really need to say more? No, but did it feel good though? <laughs> All this video was, was an attempt at justifying his actions, dodging criticism, and making himself to be more than just a real spoiled brat. This was actually physically painful to do! Mango Common, it's dangerous to go up against two people alone. Here, take this sword, and also take my help. Uh, Joe? I go by Manga Common. That's what I said! Mango Common! Hold on a second, why would you want to help me? Didn't you and your girlfriend already do a video on the Spectre Theory drama? Well, yes, but I do stand behind that video. I do think the guy's a creep. However, everything else they said about him was a little bit... Iffy at best. And one of the people we're covering is Pentagrin, and she's not the most reliable source of information. Well, alright. Fine. Just two bots. Just a robot and Mango co co Damn it all the hell, you got me doing it now! Let's start off by talking about Pentagrin. <laughs> uh, Pentagrin already took down the video. No biggie, I got it right here. <laughs> well, she also took her channel down. Wait, really? And her Twitter. Oh shit. I want to set this straight right now. We will control the horizontal. Dibs on diagonal! This is a serious video on a serious matter. Well, that doesn't mean we're gonna have fun covering it! I'm not joking, this isn't some sort of prank, and it's something that has deeply disturbed me and a lot of the people I associate with. This behaviour is unacceptable from anyone, regardless of their popularity, and I'm sickened to think that I used to associate with and defend this individual. This video isn't monetized because I think it's too gross to monopolise a matter like this. I don't want this to become some kind of circus where people come forward and start making allegations without evidence. Those people do more harm than good. No, instead people are going to make allegations with very flimsy evidence. FORESHADOWING! Especially by invalidating those who were personally involved. Because this is such a sensitive topic, I will be putting comments under review. Yeah, and you can also get rid of comments that disagree with you. Well, I guess that's no longer an issue. <laughs> I know people like to make jokes and make light of these kinds of situations, but I don't think it's appropriate to do that here. Spockter, I know you're not going to watch this, because you've admitted enough times to me and other people that you don't watch any critical videos about yourself, which is incredibly ironic. But if this video stops one person from endangering themselves by talking to you, then it's done its job. I... If this video can show at least one person that you're an idiot that doesn't know what she's talking about, then it's done its job. I knew you were a pervert from the beginning. The alarm bell started ringing when you asked young children and those older than you to draw you porn for a competition. No, in that screenshot he's saying draw my character provocatively. He even said in the competition to draw his character in clothing. No, not safe for work allowed. Was there a different contest? If there was, prove it. Actually going more in depth with the screenshot, seduction doesn't automatically equate to nudity. You can draw seductive artwork without it being, you know, nude. Yes, yeah, seduction can be a part of the more explicit artwork, but the two are not mutually exclusive. If that were the case, then this picture of Android 21 is now nudity. But I thought you had the sense and dignity to not go this far. You like to pretend you're some autonomous force that can't be reckoned with, and I have to laugh because everyone knew you were going to slip up eventually. I just wish you didn't slip in the worst way possible. Just off the top of my head, I can think of five worse ways to slip up. But at least he has the balls to stick around. As soon as you slipped up with this video, you deleted your channel, your Twitter, and you ran away. Honestly, you're nothing but a coward. You like to act like a big man, but no big man sends nudes to someone who doesn't want them, someone who is already in a relationship, someone who's told you they're uncomfortable with the conversations you were having, and yet you still persisted to have those conversations. You know, there's a lot wrong with these issues, basically how the screenshots are being presented. When a friend of mine, FNGR, made a video on the matter and drew my attention towards this situation, I went to both Pentagon and Atari's videos in order to see where the links for the screenshots were. 
Unfortunately, neither descriptions had the links to it. Oh, they had links to the special things, but I didn't see links to the actual documents. I didn't see links to the screenshots. I had to get the screenshots from FNGR's video. So, the drama changing did a better job of providing the sources of the screenshots. Bravo. Okay, let's look at some of those screenshots. If you're gonna tell someone that they're making you feel uncomfortable, don't put a little blushy face. Instead of reading like, oh, you're making me feel uncomfortable, it reads like, tee hee hee, you're making me feel uncomfortable. But maybe it's not a blushy face, I don't know, I'm socially retarded. But at least show us a little bit more context. For all I know, they're just role-playing. Not like this really matters because the person who claimed to have actually given these screenshots, stories, actually says this in her video about the subject. Which, by the way, her entire channel's gone. Yay. Letting the evidence pile up on its own was one of the best decisions I could have ever made to help others. It's awful to have your idol that you looked up to expose themselves to you literally and figuratively and show who they really are. I don't feel bad for acting and letting him be a fucking idiot. Evidence doesn't pile up on its own when you're going into conversation saying you're acting to draw out a response. You are actively lying to Spockter, giving him the impression that you are okay with his actions and how he is talking to you, in order to get evidence against him. You are creating evidence under false pretenses. If I can make a legal comparison, this would be entrapment! Do you not see the issue here? By saying this and how you presented the screenshots, you are actively calling into question your credibility and subsequently anyone who uses these screenshots. Which, from what I understand, is about over a hundred people. Ugh, oh, dear Arceus, I've got a headache now. You know who got in touch with me as well? Your ex. Oh shit guys, stop the presses! Stop the presses! Someone is talking shit about their ex! The most reliable source of information about a person ever! You know, your ex who you lied about on everyone's servers, making us ban them because you vaguely called them a blackmailer. This screenshot proves nothing. It doesn't prove that he lied about being blackmailed. This is just him telling that he was blackmailed in the past. Do you have evidence to prove that he wasn't blackmailed? Or are you just going off with assumptions again? You know what? You wouldn't need to worry about your ex blackmailing you if you weren't a fucking terrible partner to begin with. I had to apologize to them because I felt so guilty for banning them for doing nothing wrong but for hurting your fragile ego. I know someone's gonna come out of the woodwork and criticize me for using private screenshots, which I understand is a bad move to make if you're doing this just to make someone look bad. And if you look to your left, you'll see the definition of irony. But I believe this is a more serious matter that people need to be aware of. This isn't an isolated incident. But a 14 year old can do it with a 16 year old? Yes, they can. How is this a bad thing? Are they uncomfortable with it? Because you're not showing that. Because I know more than seven people have had similar issues pertaining to Spockta, and that's not okay. This isn't just some kid getting into an argument and wanting to shame one another. No, no, no. This is someone tactily preying on people and using their popularity to intimidate them into not saying anything. Pentagrin, are you a liar or just really bad at showing proof? What was the point of those screenshots? They literally have nothing to do with what you're claiming. He's not trying to silence someone with his fame. He's just bragging and that's about it. It's non-contact sexual abuse in its rawest form. I also don't want to be the asshole who sits here and doesn't provide evidence and just expects you to believe me. And... Too late. Yeah, because you've never done that before. Cough, cough, stories is eight. Cough, cough. The evidence that we've gathered just happens to be these screenshots. <laughs> well, that's pretty bad then. So why am I involved if I haven't dealt with any of this firsthand? Because people who were emotionally manipulated by Spockta have come to me asking for help. Regardless of how many subscribers I may have, I still share a lot of them with him and I have to give these victims a voice. Oh boy, we're using the term victim and perpetrator instead of the term accuser and accused. I just love it when people do that. All logic goes right out the window. Alright, so you've given a few screenshots and right off the bat, this doesn't prove anything. This is just someone claiming that these events happened. Maybe this stuff happened, maybe it didn't. Wouldn't the people who being talked about this be the ones to go to about it? I mean, if the person who gave you these screenshots is friends with them, then contacting these people would have been an easy thing to do and something you should have done in order to confirm the story. 
I myself have had some very unsavoury run-ins with Spockta, but the sexual abuse is paramount and should not be swept under the rug or overshadowed by petty things. You can still like his content. I don't want him to get a free pass to do this shit, though, because he has more subscribers. He's already made it abundantly clear to a lot of us that he thinks he's better than us because of the amount of subscribers he has. Remember the way I managed to make you leave your own server, Spockta, because I called you out on that? Yeah. I don't want people thinking that this is how relationships work. I don't want people thinking that this is acceptable in any circumstance. I want to say it right now that I want nothing to do with him in the future. Once this video goes up, he's blocked on all my accounts, he's gone from my life. Yeah, and so is everybody else because you're completely gone now. I want nothing to do with him or any of his close circle who will inevitably get involved. I know what he's like. He'll never admit anything publicly, and he'll always want to save face. Well, he did admit to it, and in fact, I think he admitted to it when he didn't even do it. And from what I've seen here, this entire video thus far is proving nothing that you claim to happen, happened. But even if everything you said about him is true, you did a pretty bad job of proving it. He'll start shit and then hide and face no consequences. I'm calling it now. He's gonna go on a hiatus and not say anything about this. I'm not a forgiving person, and as someone who has been sexually abused in my real life in the past, I have no remorse for what I'm saying now, because I know this shit can drastically alter your perception on what a relationship should be like. Pe and this was the worst way you could go about it. Yes, making a video where there are obvious out-of-context screenshots, not providing a link to said screenshots, and not proving a ton of what you're saying to be actually true, and just showing allegations and things that have nothing to do with your points. That is the best way to go about this. Sarcasm! Yeah, and I have no remorse for you because I've been falsely accused myself my entire life. People shouldn't suffer in silence. People shouldn't be intimidated by someone just because they have a larger following than them. Because you know what? Hey kids, who wants to talk about murder? <laughs> As in murdering your credibility. You see, Pentagrin, you cut off your response to Spockter saying that he wanted to intimidate this art thief with you saying, and I quote, well, yeah, that's fair. And we can thank Atari for this because she provided the exact same thing only she didn't cut that part out. If you agreed with his tactics at the time of this conversation took place, you don't get to play moral high ground and condemn him later. You approved of his tactics at the time. Now yes, people can change their mind, but when you're also willing to cut this out because it makes you look bad, this makes it a lot worse. Especially with your evidence in this entire video. This calls into question everything you've shown us. Why? Because if you're willing to cut out context in order to make yourself look good, then we have to call into question everything else you said in this video and the screenshots you provided. After all, if you're willing to cut context for this, who knows what other context you're willing to cut out? That following can turn on you in the blink of an eye. Oh god, the irony. I've warned Spock that his obsession for porn will bring him down, and you know what he said? He said he stopped caring. Oh my god, what is your problem with showing screenshots that don't prove anything? You can draw as much lewd stuff of my character as you want. Okay? So? You're more of a purist than Mr. Enter, and I don't say that lightly. That conversation has nothing to do with what you're saying. Him saying, I just stopped caring, is in response to you saying that you're not going to have any not safe for work channels to moderate. It's got nothing to do with his obsession. I think that says a lot about a person when they stop caring about the legality and repercussions of their actions and it paints a very bleak picture of them. You want to know what I don't care about, Spockta? I don't care about you. Oh boy, I don't care about this, but I deleted my channel over it. I think we should change the dictionary definition of not caring. Ugh, I, I'm about to start circuit here. <sighs> so, Jar, do you still stand by your previous statements in that video of yours? Kind of, but a lot less now. Let's cover the last video and then I'll make my decision at the end. Atari has the ratings and comments disabled. That's always a good sign. Let me just talk and be real with you guys for a second. If you don't care, then by all means, please skip ahead to where I get into what this guy has done at whatever time is on the screen. But I just wanted to say a few things before I get started here. I don't consider myself a ranter. If you've been following me for a while, you may have noticed that all of my legitimate rant videos are gone. 
So, you don't consider yourself to be a ranter, but you're doing a rant. Interesting. Yeah, Pentagrin said the exact same thing, and your videos came out on the same day, at the same hour. Almost like this is a coordinated attack against one person. In the past few days, a couple of people have come forth telling me and others about their experiences with Spockter Theory, who we've decided to keep anonymous. There was one who came forth talking about how Spockter had developed feelings for them, sent them nudes, said gross things. Well, let's read this damning evidence, shall we? Want a little secret? Sure, smiley face. Girls say pubes feel better when writing the D, people I've spoken with. Damn, never knew. It's tingly, and it gives a sensation. You can imagine it. Wee Yeah. Well, he's being inappropriate, and that's about it. The other person doesn't seem to mind. And keep in mind, he's a 16-year-old boy. Literally told them that their boyfriend didn't have to know when they mentioned that they've been in a relationship themselves since November, and more. Alright, as I already said, if he did send non-safe-for-work pics of himself, then that's illegal. But the screenshots you provided while talking about this don't actually prove that. The relationship stuff? Yeah, kind of a jerkish thing to do. But if you're the ones making the claim, then congrats, you're the ones who have to prove this. I'm not gonna listen and believe to what people say about this without hard evidence. And it's rather sad that a hundred people or so did. I just realized something. The ranting community's evidence often falls apart if you just take 10 seconds to look at it. For your next video, why don't you talk about how I supported the Holocaust and put up a bunch of screenshots of me talking about Goku vs Superman. Keep in mind that this person is a very young teenager. No matter how old they are, it still wouldn't make anything Spockter did to them right. They didn't want the attention, and they most certainly weren't giving him an invitation to say and do the things that he did. They never consented to anything, and that still matters no matter how old you are. Which, if they go by your screenshots, cut out a lot of context. I mean, as we've already shown with Pentagon's video, and how his ponder has gone, there is a lot of shadiness behind these screenshots. Okay, one, he never said in any of those screenshots that your boyfriend doesn't have to know, and you're not showing enough context again. What did he say after they said you're making me feel uncomfortable? Are they just role-playing? I have no idea! This also counts as sexual child abuse. Non-contact abuse involves non-touching activities, such as grooming, exploitation, and persuading children to perform sexual acts over the internet, and flashing. It I'm gonna be skipping most of this because Ponder did a way better job than I could ever do. But basically because Spockter was 16 at the time, pretty much everything he did was A-OK, -okay, except for sending pictures of himself. I'll play this clip from Family Guy to explain it. Chris sent an inappropriate photo of himself to one of his classmates. Thank you for bringing this to our attention, Principal Shepard. We'll make sure Chris apologizes to that little knob tease. I'm sorry, Lois, but it's not that simple. When Chris sent that picture, he was technically distributing child pornography. I'm sorry, but this makes Chris a sex offender. Oh my god! Oh, Chris <laughs> So, he is also a child exploiter. This isn't the first time that this has happened either. There are five other accounts of people coming forward to us with evidence that Spockter did the same stuff to them. I just thought that I should go ahead and put out there that this isn't the first time that he's partook in sexual misconduct. He dated someone before, doing the same stuff he did to the aforementioned person. Always said gross things. You know what? I'm not going to even read what Spockter said. I'm just going to read what the person said in response. Not really, XD. Sounds like a total victim to me. Anyway, these screenshots only show him being creepy. Nothing at all that you just claimed him to be. ...kept begging one of their friends to draw not safe for work of their OCs, even after the 13-year-old artist said they were uncomfortable with it, and just kept saying and doing gross things, as you can see from these screenshots. Okay, first you show a bunch of comments from Spockter but you don't show what the other person says. And in the next group of comments, all the person says in response is, Yeah, lovely. Th th this doesn't mean anything! We got in contact with his ex, who had this to say. I need to go do some research. Research? Smiley face, smiley face. Fuck off, I'm not reading the rest. 
He was always constantly sexual towards me, and when I told him I was uncomfortable, he'd just go, but dating me will get you used to it. Then oh, holy hell, this is the same thing as we just talked about in Pentagram's video. And it's just as flawed as it was there. I don't want to repeat myself. I don't want to be a broken record. Yeah, but this is just a statement from another person, so it really doesn't prove anything. And given the quote-unquote evidence we've seen so far, I'm going to doubt this. He kept constantly going up to me and my friends and be like, what's it feel like to be with a rancher like this? And how does it feel to be with someone ten times more popular than you? When we met, I had they them on my page, and not once did he call me by them when we dated. Instead of just correcting himself, he'd refer to me as it. So, as you can see, he's a gross arrogant asshole who's also transphobic and has a record of doing this stuff. Okay, you guys know that I often call trans people by their preferred pronouns. I call the CWC a her, Doodle Tones a her, Milo Stewart a he, and I even called Lily Pete by her preferred pronouns. But they and them really crosses the line for me. In the screenshot you just provided at the top, whoever is telling you this clearly states, I don't want to say Spockter's transphobic. If the person who's telling you this is saying that they aren't transphobic, why are you the one who gets to claim that he is? I mean, you're more than welcome to have your opinion, but if the person telling you this is saying that this stuff doesn't make him transphobic, I think they would have a little bit more credence since they're the ones who are experiencing this stuff. He has this whole facade going on to make people think he's older. Voice changer, big adult lizard man talk sprite. He's never stated his age anywhere aside from to his friends and yet no one questioned him for anything. It's the internet. You don't have to tell anyone your age with the exception of websites that request you to give your age. And even then, people can still lie about it. Also, yeah, it's called having a character. Much like I have a few characters on this channel, one of which is a drunk Scottish griffin. It's called playing up a character. Yeah, and I do that. I use a voice changer and I never showed my age. Are you going to be suspicious of me now? Or would you be less suspicious of me if I used a voice changer and told people I was eight? Questioned him for what exactly? How he constantly endorsed not safe for work images of his OC. He literally held a contest where the entire premise was to draw seductive drawings of his OC. Convenient how you ignore the fact that his contest says no porno, no explicit, or overly lewd nudity. Also, seductive doesn't automatically equate to nudity. See, no one questioned anything. We'll get more into that later. And before we go on, let it be clear that I don't think using private screenshots in a callout is okay if you're trying to make the person look bad. However, this is a serious issue that has happened way more than once. This isn't just some petty friend drama or some kids arguing with each other. This is someone who's preying on people and using his sub count to intimidate others. Yeah, you guys keep saying he intimidates people with his sub count, but all you've proven was that he brags about it a little. And you guys are also intimidating him. You're a bunch of people gaining up on one guy with a coordinated attack. I'm also not going to just sit here and make claims with no evidence either. It is non-contact sexual abuse that people need to be aware of. The deja vu is strong in this one. But back on the topic of not safe for work, he endorses not safe for work drawings of his OC all of the time. All of the time. He posted a DeviantArt status update to all his underage followers linking his fur affinity page stating that that was the place to send in your not safe for work drawings of his OC. He even also stated it in his Rick and Morty furry video. Okay, so he's a horny 16 year old. Even then, once again, this is a general announcement, not directed at underage fans. And his character is much older than that, so it's okay. Honestly, with how much of a purist you are, you make church moms look like motorcycle gangsters with Wolverine claws. And if it's fan art, he can't really control what people draw of him. Point is, he did all of this without ever mentioning his age. And what surprises me is how no one ever asked. Really? You're surprised that no one asked his age? You do know that people can lie about their age on the internet. Hell, he could have said he was 10 years old and you people are so fucking stupid you would believe him. No, I'm not letting the stories is eight thing go. He's jeopardized a ton of artists by not telling them. They were distributing porn to a minor, which is illegal. Plus, he still isn't 18. He isn't an adult anyway, so he has no right to be asking for this stuff. Especially when most, if not the majority of his audience are underage minors. I know you've already been told this, 
But in order to be prosecuted for sending underage materials to people who are minors, you have to know their age. That's like when sites like YouTube, DeviantArt, Fur Affinity, they have age things. And if a person lies about their age on these sites, then technically the website cannot be held accountable. It's the same thing for other artists. So what have we covered so far? Well, he's legally a sexual predator, a child exploiter, transphobic, sent nudes and said gross things to women and other non-consenting people, held contests for people to draw literal porn of his OC, and on top of- And if you look to your right, you'll see someone who didn't actually prove these claims. ...shit out of those drawings without ever mentioning his age. I don't see how anyone can defend this. Hello! Yeah, anyone who disagrees with me is a meanie, stinky, poo-poo head. I can understand people defending Birdie. I mean, I don't agree with it, but she is just a child who was too immature to know any better or know what she was getting herself into. Spockdra, on the other hand, I just can't defend him and I don't know or foresee anyone who can or will after all of this. Only does Ponder Sprocket, me, Manga Common, and a few others. And I'm not even halfway done with my points yet. Ah! So let's just go over the rest of these points one by one. He doesn't watch the videos made about him, and I guarantee that he isn't going to watch this or anyone's videos. He's just going to take a hiatus for a week and ignore it and come back and act like nothing happened, which is what he always does. For someone who expects people to take his criticism, he sure doesn't practice what he preaches. This is kind of ironic because it's coming from a person who disabled their comments and writings. He doesn't pay his artists for his sprites. He was bragging on DeviantArt a few months ago about being the only person in the community to pay for his assets, when he never paid his artist who was literally only looking for exposure. <laughs> <laughs> he legitimately moaned for money on stream and got mad when people took him seriously. He posted, I'm not moaning for money anymore on DeviantArt one time, and I got hella confused over what that meant. So I asked him, and he admitted that he begged for donations on streams. Whoa, guys, a YouTuber is asking for money. You know, just like anyone who has ever set up a Patreon. What does this money go towards? A fursuit. A fursuit that he also tried to beg to get for free. And let me tell you, as an experienced and basically professional cosplayer myself, I know how hard it is to make outfits, let alone huge entire fursuits. It takes hundreds and hundreds of dollars in effort and work and time to make them, and they aren't things you can make for free. I'm not a fursuiter, but I do know from experience that costumes are never cheap or easy to make. Expecting one for free and top-notch quality is not ideal. What is the point of this? Why is this even in here? This is some really petty stuff. Speaking of fursuits, he gives furries a bad name in general. He's literally what the community despises. Sexual predators and people who think that since they're pretending to be a lizard, they can get away with stuff like that just because they aren't part of the social norm. The furry community isn't centered around that and forcefully pushes people like him out of their community. He's also a hypocrite, believe it or not. He said a while ago that he was done with rant videos and videos that he always makes, and when the Toxikai shit happened, he made a video about it a day after the drama occurred in the same format that he always used. But you're doing the exact same thing! You said you were done with rant videos, and then you came back! In fact, you're the one who's being a hypocrite, not him! The example you gave doesn't prove he's a hypocrite! Just that he changed his mind! What's wrong with you?! He also endorses tracing, but got mad when someone traced a fan artist's work and sent it to him on Twitter. That screenshot does not show him endorsing tracing. In fact, the screenshot actually proves the opposite. It's a little hard to read, but the screenshot has Spocker saying, This was trace My man. Why'd you do that, frowny face? I think someone's been having too many special brownies. If you think that's endorsing tracing, then what are you smoking and where can I get some of that sweet hanky-danky kush? He also sends his subscribers to attack people. What you see here is a link to a status update where he calls out an art thief and uses the phrase intimidate to get the artist to back off. I know the art thieves suck, but really man, just report the repost and move on. Sending people out after art thieves are only exposing them to more people whom they can then steal more art from. Yeah, but could we also say you're doing the exact same thing? I mean, by your own stupid logic, you should just report him and move on. But instead, you're giving him exposure! So what do we know now? 
He's a sexual offender, a transphobe, a child exploiter, begs for free not safe for work art of his OCs, and heavily endorses it without ever disclosing the fact that he's a minor, held a contest for people to draw not safe for work art of his OC, begged for a free fursuit, gives furries in general a bad name, moaned for money on a live stream, is a hypocrite, sends his subscribers to attack people, ignores any and all videos made about him, and doesn't pay his own. You know, there's an old saying, repeat a lie enough times, and it'll eventually become a true. And wouldn't you know, looking at the reaction to all this, there's probably so much more that I'm missing, and we also aren't even done with this video yet. Still don't know how people will be able to defend any of this. Oh, this is gonna bite you in the ass. And the he's just a child excuse doesn't justify it. He's 17. He knows what he's doing. He's gonna be an adult next year. Adults or not, it doesn't excuse all that he's said and done. I hate to break it to you. I'm sure that everyone is wondering by now what my experience with Spockter has been like. All I can say is that we hardly ever spoke and only got together to discuss small, mediocre YouTube things. I mean, one time he called my server at the time self-righteous. No! He called you self-righteous? Why would anyone say that about you? And also told me on another occasion that I didn't know how YouTube worked. <laughs> okay, enough, enough. And the rest of the video was just her repeating herself. The warning signs were present from the very beginning. Donkey Kong for the arcade featured Mario's first appearance, but even in those early days, something was off. And let's have MatPat himself explain why this whole section on Donkey Kong and DK Jr. is wrong. Laying everything out across Cranky's lifespan makes one thing abundantly clear. Jumpman, the Mario we see in Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. is not the same person as the Mario we see in the Super Mario series. The sexual maturity of Cranky Kong proves that it can't be the case. So, I pose a question for you, the prosecution, aka Matt Pat. If this is actually Mario's father doing this to DK and DK Jr., then how does this translate to Mario being a psychopath? And the sins of the father do not translate to the sins of the son. Oh, and this will bite another chunk out of Matt Pat's theory later. So, since this is in Mario... Mario is an equal opportunity animal abuser. That is slander and you know it! Or is it libel since this is a video? Damn legalese! He also hates insects. Take for instance Wigglers, innocent, happy caterpillars that, across the Mario franchise, show absolutely zero intentions of ever hurting Mario. <laughs> He ruins their home, not once, but twice, in both Super Mario 64 and Super Mario Sunshine. Then, after trashing their homes, he proceeds to jump on them, crushing them to death. An innocent creature who did nothing wrong but get upset when his home was violated. Thanks for cherry picking there, Matt Pat. Allow me to debunk you first in Super Mario Sunshine. The reason why I had to remove the Wiggler from that tower was because it was messing with a device that was made for an egg for the legendary and near extinct, I might add, creature known as the Sandbird. Think of it like a makeshift incubator for a regular egg. Mayo had to remove the wiggler from the device in order for the sandbird to keep warm. So, you know, the legendary creature wouldn't die. As for the Super Mario 64 example, Mario only attacked the wiggler because he had a power star. Also, he didn't kill the wiggler. He only hurt him to the point where the wiggler would give him the star. And, by the by, the wiggler was being antagonized by the star itself. That's not even mentioning creatures like Cheap Cheeps fish who are just swimming around peacefully. Yet these innocent fish will easily kill Mario in two to three hits, depending on what power-ups you have. Gets you right there. Well, fast forward to adult Mario, hopping once more atop his trusted and loyal friend to save the day and... Wait, he just punched him. Look again, Mario punches the Yoshis to get them to extend their tongue. You can even see the Yoshi flinch before it happens. He is physically beating this animal to get it to do what he wants it to do. You know, for someone who likes to look deeply into things, you have a tendency to miss a real big one when you make this claim. Namely, the art in Super Mario World and Super Mario Galaxy blows this out of the water. And this is official art. Yeah, I don't see Mario hitting the lovable dinosaur, I see him pointing. Your knowledge of the land shall be great. And let's not forget that Mario will drop a Yoshi into a pit without hesitation, just to get a couple extra inches out of his jump. A pit that, time and time again, has clearly been shown to result in death. Player choice. 
In fact, it's easy for the player to not have to drop Yoshi since there was a flying enemy in that same footage that can be used as another platform. Just because, oh, I don't know. If I'm bad at stealth games, does that ought to make Solid Snake the world's worst infiltrator? Oh. No! 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 Ah! <laughs> I died already! And it's asking me for the first five minutes of the game! Damn it! No, it doesn't. If anything, it's just a reflection of the choice of the player. Luigi doesn't get any thanks at the end of Mario is Missing either. After Luigi's completed this quest, Mario just strolls out and stands there. F stands there. No thank you, no nothing. Just staring at his brother like, I hope you liked the lamest adventure in our franchise, bro. Cause that's the most you're ever going to get. That's the most selfish, egotistical thing I've ever heard. Thank you! This is a weak point. Well, for those who don't know, here's how the ending for the game really goes. There's no thank you, huh? Now, you could see this as a thank you to the player, but people can also interpret this to see that Mario is thanking Luigi. Also, the cheery theme music of the scene also denotes a happy scene. And in that stare lasts for maybe two, three seconds at the most. You're just reading way too much in that small time span. And I mean disgusting. Is Mario's behavior at the end of Mario Power Tennis? Yeah, we're pulling out the real obscure games to get to the heart of this jacket. Does it sound like I'm fired up? Yeah, cause I'm fired up. I am angry that I have been deceived by this sleazeball plumber for decades. That I have called him a hero. That I have been his fanboy. And I... Holy shit! We'll always love you! I can't believe you did this to me! God damn it! How could you do this to me? Here's why. In Mario Power Tennis, if Luigi wins, this is what happens. He celebrates. For once, this perpetual player 2, this second fiddle, gets his chance in the spotlight. People are cheering for him. A stadium full of people are celebrating Luigi. He's holding a trophy, and what does Mario do? The brother who Luigi would love the approval of more than anything else? What does he do? Walks up to him, applauding, laughing, slaps him on the back, and then grinds his shoe into his brother's foot. Stands there, and grinds it in. Each history's greatest monster! Mario Power Power Tennis is not actually canon in the Mario timeline. I have eight cousins who are brothers, and this is pretty much typical behavior. Hell, in Super Mario Bros. 3, Luigi takes a shot at Mario by jumping on him, and even tries to hit Mario with a Koopa shell. And while I'm not going to go through with the flanderization of the first part of his video, I want to point out that Mario has actually thanked Luigi in a lot of their journeys. Case in point, the sequel in Luigi's Mansion. Luigi, you saved Mario. I did it. Way to go. Oh. Number one. In my dream, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Let's talk for a minute about Mario the Man Whore. Sure, we all know that Princess Peach is Mario's main squeeze now, but it's easy to overlook his flings with other women. Take, for instance, Pauline. The girl stranded atop the girders in Donkey Kong may appear to have the same fashion sense as the Toadstool Princess, but one look at the promotional box art of our damsel in distress shows us that Pauline is a very different type of gal. In the wrong place at the wrong time! As you yourself have stated, Matt Pat. Joe, Matt, the Mario we see in Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. is not the same person as the Mario we see in the Super Mario series. The sexual maturity of Cranky Kong proves that it can't be the case. Later, in Miniland Mayhem, she even gets her own toy modeled after her. There's no Peach Toy <laughs> theme park based around his hit toy line. <laughs> There's no Peach Toy Screw you, continuity! Waves of comments about this being either before or after a Peach Mario celebrity breakup, timelines agree that the MVDK series takes place around the same time as New Super Mario and Super Mario RPG. This is a big issue I see in a lot of Matt Pat's videos. He'll make points, but he won't ever make his references known to people. You don't link to any supposed timelines in your description, you just keep promoting yourself down there. And frankly, from all the points I debunked already, I'm not really gonna believe anything you say on face value anymore. Dream, 
Land for the Game Boy. And yes, while the manual and promotional material may bill this as Mario saving just another princess out of the kindness of his heart, there's no denying what you see in the final scene of the game. Oh Daisy, Daisy, he cries out when seeing her. Now, I'm sorry, but that's not how a friend greets another friend. Names only get repeated in romantic settings. The kingdom was invaded by the Koopa, uh, black magic, ah, there we go. The quiet, peace-loving mushroom people, aka toads, were turned into mere stones, bricks, and even field horsehair plants, whatever that is, blah de blah de blah The only one who can undo the magic is the princess toadstool. There you have it. Each and every brick you shatter is someone you were supposed to be saving. And the game takes it one step further, rewarding you for killing them, giving you points for each and every block you smash. In the official story of Super Mario Bros. by Nintendo, it shows the story of pictures happening near Peach's castle when Bowser turned the toads into brick, meaning that those toads are the only ones that were transformed at that point in the Mushroom Kingdom. The image you see on screen right now shows the story. In the official story, it is said Bowser turned the toad residents into block, but it is shown that he not only does at the castle during the capture of the princess, all the blocks Mario hits are not toads. Blocks are naturally made in the kingdom itself. Although Nintendo never really revealed how it's made naturally, you can see they're not made from the toads when Super Mario Bros. is beaten and all the toads are set free. This meaning that all the bricks shown in later games are not toads, but rather naturally developed. Look at his behavior with a mega mushroom. Look at his utter lack of concern for anything in his way, knowing full well that each and everything in front of him is an actual resident of the kingdom. He even celebrates his massacre when he finishes. As I said before, when the player beats the original Super Mario, the toads have returned to normal, and those blocks are naturally formed. Even then, MatPat, you're the one who's making this claim that the blocks are toads, and you're not showing your evidence. And while we're talking about his murderous tendencies, let's talk for a minute about Mario's preferred method of delivering death, crushing. Against the creatures that are trying to kill him, and can usually do so in one or two shots. Also, I'm skipping the history on crushing torture techniques since Mario isn't torturing the creatures like how MatPat is comparing it to. Did that make you uncomfortable? Make you cringe? Could you see yourself being repulsed by that sort of thing? Oh, I've been feeling sick and grossed out ever since you started your character assassination. Good! Because it's normal for someone to react that way! Ah, I can't stop laughing! Ah. <laughs> He relishes in it, yipping and yee-hawing as he leaps from one flattened corpse to the next. He has no sense of guilt, no sense of remorse. Oh yeah, it's like he ever makes those sounds when he jumps. Also, the players can just jump over the monsters and not kill them. That's the player's choice. I died already! Or, in some cases, players' lack of skill. Doesn't have any remorse for their crimes? The Joker, Hannibal Lecter, Mr. Hyde, Ted Bundy, Lumberjack Dexter. These are all men with antisocial personality disorder. Actual psychopaths. Well, two of those characters are fictional, so also from the official, and I do mean official, Nintendo Character Guide of 1993, Mario is tolerant. He'll accept anyone or anything at face value. He treats anyone and anything with dignity and respect. He has seen too many things in his travels to be narrow-minded. Also, way to go with the worst characters to compare Mario to. I can definitively say Mario has antisocial personality disorder. Behind that plastered on smile, behind that perpetually happy Hitsumi is a monster. A man who has proven himself to be a threat to everything and everyone around him. He is no hero. We just haven't stopped to question him until now. Who would have thunk it? And all it took was cherry picking, making up false evidence, and reading far too much into little things. Mario, swing your arms! 
if you think about it, it makes sense. There was only ever one piece of evidence we really needed to prove Mario's evil intentions. Damn you, blue shells. But hey, it's just a theory. Ah, I hate that catchphrase. Almost anything can be a Pokemon. Keys, ice cream, magnets, whatever kind of creature this is. There are no limits. Now, let's jump over to the magical world of Mario. And holy adjacent turns, Batman! That was quite the abruption right there. We go from talking about Pokemon straight into Mario with hardly any sort of transition between the two. Now granted, this was a missed opportunity, as you could have easily made a small connection here by saying another popular franchise from Nintendo, which would have been a good verbal thing to add to your audience and to think that there's more connections between the two. Granted, both Nintendo IPs are very famous, but a subtle little vocal thing right there would also be a good thing to help and give a little bit of a hint to your audience what you're going to do to connect the two worlds. Where we have Yoshi, Mario's adorable and trusty companion. But wait, is it possible that these two universes are actually connected? And that Yoshi is possibly a species of Pokemon? Alright, sell me this. Luckily for us, the first piece of evidence for this theory comes right at the very beginning of Pokemon Red and Blue, in your very own bedroom. It's always such a charming start to begin your journey in the safety of your own bedroom. Tell the guys playing Ruby and Sapphire, they start out in the back of a moving van. Ah! However, one item that always seems to make an appearance in your bedroom is a Nintendo console. Yeah, in every generation of Pokemon, your character always has the most relevant Nintendo console in the room. And in the case of Pokemon Red and Blue, it's an NES. Cool! But if you observe the NES, a text box will appear saying, A game with Mario wearing a bucket on his head. This is in reference to the Game Boy Color game Mario and Wario. And here's the first problem. I have to question you on this, Connor, since no, that is not what you get when you observe the SNES. And if you don't believe me... Brilliant! Brilliant! I get this might be a minor point, but this serves as his first actual legitimate point in the video, and it's based off a of false pretense. Not only that, but it also brings up the question of your experience with the Pokemon franchise if you couldn't get bothered to actually get the correct information. Now one could possibly say, hey, he's talking about the Japanese version, but if it was, then it should have been up to Connor to say that, but he doesn't, and frankly I shouldn't have to prove his point for him if it is. But if it's also from another game, well, remember he said, The first piece of evidence for this theory comes right at the very beginning of Pokemon Red and Blue. So, this is the first conclusion I must come to concerning this. Well, looks like that old bonehead got himself in trouble. Turns out he didn't do his full research either. As it turns out, you only get that message in Saffron City when you're looking at the copycat kids' house, and they have an NES, and that's where the message is from. And now there's old hack of a don't suffice a reference where there's the bucket, and it looks like it's going on Mario's head. So... This would mean that, even in the Pokémon universe, Mario is a fictional character and a video game series. Who would have thought? So, what does this all mean exactly? Well, if it was right, then it could have just been a fun little shout-out. After all, Nintendo does own the rights to Pokemon in the systems, duh. And it's not unheard of for games to own by the same company to make references to other games they own. Nintendo themselves have done this before, such as the case of Super Mario RPG, where we see Samus and Link make cameos. Well, in the world of Pokemon, someone had to create the game and design the characters. And it's maybe possible that characters like Yoshi were inspired from Pokemon themselves. Think about it, in our world, Yoshi is based off of multiple dinosaurs. But, if we lived in the Pokemon universe... Fun little fact, the Pokemon games' actual animals are referenced in them. Heck, one of the most latest examples is in Pokemon X and Y, where we see actual fish being shown in Luminous City's restaurants or how there are actual butterflies that appear during battles. And if we're going with Pokedex entries, an example would be the Indian elephants. So it wouldn't be a stretch that there would be ancient dinosaurs in the Pokemon world. 
even then, if you want to look at types of Pokemon, we've got mice, frogs, and turtle Pokemon, so there's a basis right there. My point is, Yoshi doesn't have to be purely based off Pokemon in the Pokemon world. Yoshi has a body resembling that of a Trico, even with its big nose and red patch. One's a shell, the other's an underbelly. While it is a nitpick, you know what you could have done here, Waffle? You could have brought up Squirtle Shell, since it holds a lot more common with that spot. Heck, you could have brought up another tie-in here with Squirtle, since you could have brought up the design being somewhat similar to Koopas with Squirtles. It would have been a good thing to bring up with your idea of fictional characters being based off Pokemon. Even better! Yoshi is an ancient Pokemon from the past. Why not? Yoshi shares a ton of characteristics as the Pokemon. For starters, Yoshi hatches from an egg. Not only that, but take a look at this. Here's a Pokemon egg, and here's a Yoshi egg. The resemblance is uncanny. You know, when it comes to the old bring two sprites together for a comparison shtick, I normally don't bring this up unless it's really egregious. Such as... The direct match to the curved arms of the Starman... Never again, never again. I could point out that, you know, they have different tones with the coloring and the spots aren't in exactly the same places, but once again, this is a missed opportunity for you here, Connor. You could have brought up Game Freak, because you want to know why? They actually developed the Yoshi game. I would also argue that it's just a reference to it, but it's still something you could have brought up for a meta concept. Another thing I want to point out, if your reference in the beginning was true, then you could have easily brought up that Game Freak also made the Mario and Wario game. There's even in different stages of evolution for the Yoshis. Alright, I know you brushed past this, so I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on it, but it, these aren't evolutions. They're power-ups, and temporary ones at that. Especially the winged Yoshi, which only lasts for a small bit of time, and then he's back to being a regular Yoshi. He also has a pretty strong moveset, like the ground pound, shooting fireballs, which he can't do unless he eats something akin to a red shell or a fire piranha plant. What I'm getting at is that he needs an outside source to actually pull off his move. And... a tackle? Even though that's a move that pretty much anything can do if it has momentum, even a rock could do it and- ah! Yeah. So that's cool. But I guess the most popular argument now would be... Why aren't there any Yoshis in Pokemon games? And to that, I say... That's a good point. My own personal theory is that the Yoshis are all extinct. Yeah, just like how in our world, there's no more dinosaurs, in Pokemon, there are no more Yoshis. You know, if it wasn't extinct Pokemon, you'd think there'd be a fossil about it, you know, since we do have extinct Pokemon and we have the ability to resurrect them. But, nope. Or, wait a second. Is it possible that the Mario games are actually based on a true story? At least, in the Pokemon world. I'm serious, Yoshi is Mario's most faithful companion. Mario saved Yoshi. He saves all of the Yoshis at one point. He takes care of him. And in turn, Yoshi has a strong affinity for Mario, always sticking by his side and helping him out in battle. Doesn't this all ring a bell? To me, it sounds a lot like the strong bond between a trainer and their Pokemon. Is it possible that Mario was the original Pokemon trainer, traveling the world and fighting evil with just one Pokemon? Uh... Alright, now, it's fine for you to have your theories, but this is just coming out of nowhere! And I realize it's about to give us evidence, but this just blew my mind and not in the good way. Think about it. There's even eight worlds with eight castles that Mario had to conquer with just one Pokémon. Actually, depending on the Mario game, there are anywhere from five to nine worlds. Heck, if we want to go back to the game that Yoshi first appeared in, Super Mario World, there were nine worlds in that one. And to honor that tradition, the eight castles were replaced with eight gyms. Taking a coincidence as one factor, eight locations, and a factor that no longer applies in the Pokemon game since gyms were, you know, taken out in Sun and Moon. Mario and Yoshi were the original trainer and Pokemon. They're... legendary. Hmm, you know what? I like that, and I think I'm gonna stick to it. Of course, this is all just my crazy fantasy opinion. Look, Connor, I'm gonna end the video here because I don't really have much of a point to say here other than you're using really loose evidence on this, and I think that you're jumping to conclusions on it. 
I don't want to be the bad guy here, I really don't, since Connor's video was really innocent. But it was a jumbled up mess that didn't hold a lot of evidence, save for referential material that could just be that. References. References alone do not equate to just evidence. Look, I don't have a lot to say here, and I highly doubt that Connor will see this, but if he does, I really mean no harm by this. I just felt like talking about the video because it just seemed out there. So if you haven't heard of this person, well, you're not alone. I haven't heard of this person until a few people in my Discord point her to me. She happens to be a Twitch streamer or YouTuber who's actually more focused on Pokemon. Which, you know, hey, cool, I like Pokemon. But I mean, some of her videos are... Wait a minute. <gasps> what is going on, guys? This is Dobbs here, bringing you another Pokemon... Shut up, fool! Stop your jibber-jabber! Unfortunately, we're not talking about Pokemon today. What the topic is... I'm gonna be telling you guys all the sh you need to stop saying to women gamers. You well, I'm nothing if not open-minded, so let's hear what she has to say. You may be wondering, Jubilee, what gives you the authority to speak on all these topics? And that's a great question. It's because I'm a f***ing woman. Really? Because I don't see how it's the qualification. I mean, if anything, I could say it's more of a bias that you've got. And throwing the fact that a lot of this video ends up to be anecdotal with you not even providing a single clip to back this up. I mean, why is your gender the only qualification you have about this? I get that this is a rant, but considering the fact that you actually do somewhat of a little bit of legwork, even then I have issues with it, you couldn't be bothered to find clips of this? I mean, don't get me wrong, I do believe that people to act like this in real life and online, but at the same time, you're not really painting it as a whole thing for me to believe you. Let's just jump into it. Here's all the you need to stop saying and doing to women, okay? When a woman tells you she's a gamer, please do not bombard her with questions as if she has something to prove to you. We shouldn't have to justify our existence as gamers because you think a woman can only be a real gamer if she knows the answers to all your obscure questions. I mean, I fail to see how this is a woman problem. This sort of gatekeeping is something that's done to both women and men. And unlike you, I actually do have an example to back this up. And it's a popular one. A few years back, Matt Pat made a few videos talking about, well, take your pick, Persona 4, Phoenix Wright, TF2 versus Overwatch, videos that held a lot of misinformation about this and people outright question if you even play the games. Hell, Matt Pat even did a full-on livestream where he talked about this gatekeeping a while ago. Will always find a way to criticize you or call you like a noob for coming into like Dark Souls. I had done a ton of research on and it. You I, love Dark Souls. I, I love. These are like. And usually, I try to like research as many of the games as possible. But there's only so much that you can know about in a period of time. Honey, like that's ridiculous. How dare you not know everything about every game and TV show and movie and anime ever made? That's unacceptable. Well, then maybe you shouldn't be talking about it. It's hard. It's, it's hard. hard. And, and some of the some of the fan bases. We can talk about this more later. But some of the fan bases are real. They they don't want new people, which is really sad. It is. It's, it's they, they don't want to invite new people in to appreciate a game or uh, anime has the same issue as well. What we have here are classic examples of gatekeeping. And if you don't know what gatekeeping is, well, it's essentially a term used when someone decides to set a standard or a limit for how someone is considered to be a fan of a piece of work. The reason why I showed the MatPat clip was to show that this isn't really just a female issue. Even if this was a problem, I don't see how it's designated only at women, especially when you got someone like MatPat, whom last I checked is a guy is getting treatment that's similar to it. Now granted, considering that he's trying to make a career off of this and try to be knowledgeable about the subjects, it's a little bit different when people gatekeep him. But it's still something that's negative and I wouldn't really classify it as just an issue for women. Of course, that's questioning if this is even gatekeeping to begin with, because this is such a nebulous example, and Jubilee here is going with the most negative interpretation of this scenario as possible. I get that this is a rant, but later in the video you actually provide proof to back up some of your claims, and then I have an issue, but... But shouldn't you have at least an example of this behavior if it's so common? And even then, what if the guy just wants to talk about the topic and there's no malicious intent behind it? I don't know, to me, I would be excited to have more people to bounce ideas off of and right. talk to and, and who are fans of my thing. When I meet fellow fans about games or such, I like to ask them their thoughts, like with Pokemon or such. It's how we get to know each other, it's how we bond over a common interest. Why do you assume there's malicious intention behind that? Stop separating women into two categories of real gamer and fake gamer who's only doing it for attention. Based on your weird qualifications of what makes a real gamer. I mean, this happens all the time with guys too. Do I need to bring up the PC Master Race and how some people will qualify console gamers as not real gamers? Who are you, the gaming police? 
You know, I find this really ironic from the person trying to dictate what guys shouldn't be saying to girls. I'm gonna be telling you guys all the sh you need to stop saying to women gamers. Who are you, the gaming police? Like, don't get me wrong. Guys, if they are doing this, they should not do this. But at the same time, dictating what they can and can't say, yeah, you're gonna get a different reaction. Stop telling women that they're good for a girl. Just saying that out loud, like, makes my skin crawl and my blood boil. Soka. Really, a lot of the times I could just put that right there and because it's anecdotal, I can't really say much about it. Being a girl isn't a f***ing handicap. We're not a subcategory of human. F*** you guys that say you're good for a girl. Just f*** you guys. F*** you guys. If you have said that before, never say that shit again. Who are you, the gaming police? You may want to stop going down on the wine. <laughs> Stop saying, I wish I could date a gamer girl as if we're unicorns and this isn't just a huge industry that many women are involved in. Also, gamer girls aren't gonna date you if you say shit like that. Just saying. Oh no, someone's expressing a preference in someone that they want to date. Why is that a bad thing? I mean, if you said you want to date a guy with big muscles or a guy who had a stable job, wouldn't that be just as bad? I'm <laughs> game that requires team communication like Overwatch or Fortnite and you're on a team with a woman, don't make it weird or creepy. Many women will intentionally never speak on a mic because of the crap they get, but if you do happen to end up on a team with a woman who's actually willing to speak on a mic, don't make it awkward for her. Like, welcome her. Treat her as an equal. Why am I having to say this? Like, this is common sense! Again, it's not something that I disagree with, but much like how you can if someone is acting out, you can always just block or report the players who do that. I mean, if Xbox can do it. For show going down! Grass, press the mute button! No, that mutes everybody! I got a better idea. Let's mute that oil spew instead. We're using the handy player mute button to shut him up. You guys are so pathetic, you chaff my <laughs> Why can't you? I don't even necessarily disagree. People shouldn't be acting like that, but it's the internet. And it's not really a problem for just women. It's a problem for both men and women. It's not a gendered issue. It's a people issue. This past weekend, there was a tweet that went viral that expresses a sentiment that's held by many men in the gaming community. You know, this has been an issue throughout the entire video, but she has been really been using a lot of weasel words. I bring it up here because it's one of the most egregious cases. Mainly because words like often, some, or many are actually vague descriptors and will raise questions in people's mind. It's not being specific, and it's also a bit of a generalization as well. And it's even worse in this case because you're generalizing a whole group of people and an entire gender. In fact, it actually doesn't add any legitimacy to your statements and just raises more questions and answers. I mean, at this point you're now just kind of generalizing across an entire group of people. Being a girl isn't a f***ing handicap. We're not a subcategory of human. This past weekend, there was a tweet that went viral that expresses a sentiment that's held by many men in the gaming community. Many men act like this. Many men believe this. Something's not right here. Dear all women, Pokemon is not a real game. Animal Crossing is not a real game. The Sims is not a real game. Mario is not a real game. Stardew Valley is not a real game. Mobile games are not real games. Put down the baby games and play something that requires challenge and skill for once. Sincerely, all the actual gamers. <sighs> I'm aware that this guy is especially an a but now this is a confusing point because one, she doesn't show this actual tweet, she shows a screenshot, so finding it was a little bit difficult. I don't even know if the source I found it on is actually the one she's referring to because she doesn't provide a link, she doesn't provide anything to help me find it. But then again, looking at this tweet, it was posted by a girl. 
Again, the way you went through this video, I can't be sure this is the tweet you're talking about. And considering I actually talked to the person who posted this, they said it was a meme tweet. A bait tweet. You don't show the tweets. You don't show who posted it. What am I supposed to do? You're even willing to show tweets later in your video, so why not this one? Why not put awareness to this guy? Also, I love how you're taking a post and ignoring the rest of it. No, you're not a gamer. I'm so sick of all these people who think they're gamers. No, you're not. Most of you are not even close to being gamers. I see people saying, I put well over 100 hours in this game, it's great. That's nothing. Most of us can easily put 300 plus hours in all our games. I see people who only have Nintendo Switch and claim to be gamers. Come talk to me when you pick up a PS4 controller, and then we be friends. Well, first of all, this is clearly made by a console peasant, because PC is actually considered to be more for hardcore gamers. But secondly, this comes off as more of a bait post. It's intentionally meant to stir things up, and congratulations, you took the bait. I mean, the source isn't even from Twitter. I mean, from what I found out, it's from a Steam user. Again, this is confusing, and more so that you didn't want to give the full context makes this weird. Why do you assume it was a guy who made this? But many people really do feel this way, and it's f***ing stupid. Hey lady, would you mind easing up on the weasel words, especially when you don't have anything to back it up other than anecdotes? Also, what about Mario is girly to you? Uh, no, the game isn't referring to Mario as being girly. It's obviously referring to the difficulty of the games. If you actually showed the first paragraph, then you'd realize that the post is skill shaming and proclaiming that these games are too easy. Obviously, I don't agree with it, but context is a factor here. Stop making games without a female playable character unless you have a good reason not to. Wait, why is that a problem for women? And why are you dictating what developers should and shouldn't do? You just said unless they have a good reason, so as- Also, while we're at it, start adding non-binary and gender fluid options. Uh, I'm confused. Why is this a problem for women gamers now? Please, stay on topic. Also- Link is non-binary, uh, this is canon. Okay, so... I'm guessing this is a joke. Hmm. Next you'll say that Samus is trans. In addition to making more playable female characters, stop making sh** like this. Who are you, the gaming police? What the f*** is this? What horny ass incel gamer designed this sh**? Oh, that's Risa Abata. You know a woman? Uh, <clears throat> Also, love how you're willing to assume that a man did this design. Kinda reminds me of how people call Bayonetta over-sexualized and blame men for it even though she was designed by a woman. What horny ass incel gamer designed this sh I'm beginning to think that maybe the reason you get mean comments isn't due to the fact that you're a girl. Look at her back. It's literally breaking from the massive t Oh, and how convenient that they use the same screenshot that so many other people have, but if you look at other screenshots of the game, her back looks fine. It could just be because of the angle, the camera, or even a glitch. Critique it all you want, but don't dictate to me what people shouldn't be allowed to create. Stop making games where you didn't hire a single woman at any point in the process. There are plenty of women who want to work on games. Please hire them so that your games are not complete shit like the shit I just showed you a second ago. Oh, you understood that? Not a word. You mean like how Xenoblade Chronicles 2 hired Risa Abata to do character designs? Yeah, this is why I don't want to believe you when you talk about these anecdotal things. You're willing to either not do the proper research to actually back up your points, or you're willing to lie in order to mischaracterize things and slam the game. Also, when these over-sexualized video game characters are adapted into live-action movies, and the main character in the video game looks like this, don't be surprised when the real-life human cast in the film doesn't have these impossible body proportions. Women do not look like this in real life, guys. <sighs> I love how you're comparing the original Laura Croft to the rebooted version, despite the fact that in the original Laura Croft was actually depicted in the movies with a fuller figure by Angelina Jolie. Guys, like, please talk to a real human woman for once in your life and you'll see what i'm saying oh wow put downs that'll really get the guys to listen to you just insult them more and more 
good for a girl. Just saying that out loud, like, makes my skin crawl and my blood boil. Guys, like, please talk to a real human woman for once in your life and you'll see what I'm saying. Look, I'm not even sure you're gonna even listen to me, but if you're actually gonna talk to people like this, or you're trying to change how guys actually act online, insulting them is not a good way to go. You may want to stop going down on the wine. <sighs> That's just some of the things that women in gaming experience on a regular basis. As a streamer and a YouTuber in the gaming community, I also experience things that are unique to content creation as well. And the other women I know who create gaming content experience the same things. So let's go over the shit you need to stop saying to women who are YouTubers and streamers and content creators in the gaming community. Stop telling women that they can't swear. Women can f***ing swear if they want to. You know, I'd actually take this point much more seriously if you didn't openly censor yourself. Yeah, that's uh, not me censoring her, that's her doing it. Look, swear and cuss all you like, but if you're willing to censor yourself on your own accord, it really is sending mixed messages about this point. Male gamers swear all the f***ing time, and no one seems to give a shit about it. Okay, how about we just ignore PewDiePie in the N-word, shall we? Hell, PewDiePie in general was heavily criticized for swearing before he became the biggest YouTuber on the platform. The, the vast majority of male gamers swear every other word, and no one seems to question it. Oh god, too many weasel words! I'm being infested with ferrets! You know, there's more I could talk about, but it's... Kind of, ugh. Stop ignoring all the hard work, dedication, and care that women put into their content. What horny ass incel gamer designed this sh Look, I have nothing but respect for women in gaming. I do not approve of guys treating women like this. I'm sure they do exist. Biggest issue for me is the lack of self-awareness and how hypocritical this comes off as. You're trying to dictate what people say, but you don't want them to generalize. You don't want them to dictate what people say. I make fun of her for this, yes. I put a couple jokes, little harmless things. Is it mature? No, it's not. But then again, I'm doing it for a laugh and to entertain my audience. It's not an attack on her as a person, as a girl. It's me going after how she's being so hypocritical and how unprofessional she is throughout this entire ordeal. Look, for all I know, she could be a nice person, but this video kind of points me in the wrong direction in that regard. Look, you may not want to listen to me, and that's fine. But if you can put your opinion out there, then I can put my opinion out there. That's kind of thing about going out online. And look, if guys are actually doing this, I don't approve of it, but I don't approve of girls doing it either. I don't see this as a gendered issue, I see it as a people issue. Howdy folks in the web, Skull coming back with some very special guests today. A talking tiger skin rug who has a ton of wit that can put me to shame. Hobbs. Or Youngblood Fantasy 91. Whichever one works. Oh stop it you. Thanks for the flattery, but hey, I'm really a huge softie when you get to know me. And honestly, you could classify me more as a tiger figment of your imagination type of deal. And the one who replaced my Mr. Fuzzy Bottoms is... Doodle Tones! Greetings, mortals! I'm some high-pitched weep scrub who starts shit whenever they talk about Pokemon. I'm also a shameless shell. I knew that blue bread was a bad idea for lunch. But in any case, we've got a treat for you all today. Those who are familiar with my content know I have recently covered a Poketour by the name of Verlissify, doing two commentaries on the guy, and more recently, me being blocked by him on Twitter. Oh, not for the two videos I did, but mainly because I questioned what he considered clickbait. But that's all beside the point. Today we're covering a video he made called the most desperate video in the history of YouTube. Huh. Something seems off here. Now, I personally am not the most informed on Pokemon or the controversy that Verlissa Lissa Lissa Soliloquy has embroiled himself with, but you don't need a degree in Pokemon Monatics to know that videos with such clickbait titles are a desperate cry for audience attention. It's the same technique we see on prank and reaction videos, and is a mainstay with previously exposed YouTube whores. So, if your video title has already sunk to that level, congratulations, you're in the Marianas Trench. And of course, blocking other voices resolves dissenting opinion. Well, the like-dislike ratio shows otherwise, but hey, who am I to judge someone that wants to rip off Leafy and Pyrocynical with their ironic clickbait video titles? He is a wellspring of creativity. So we'll listen in and see what we have to say. Showing that plagiarism again, aren't we? I didn't know you were part parrot! Now, I've never been triggered by a YouTube recommended video. Gotta love the triggered phrasing. Certainly makes me want to take you seriously. What makes a weird thing is for him to say this is because I've seen his recommended videos in my last commentary on him, and I noticed he has Sargon of a Con videos recommended to him. 
I don't know, it just comes off as weird to use Triggered for what is essentially a short fan video. If it's from someone I don't really care about, you know, you click on the video, or you don't, and then you just kind of ignore and you're good to go. Until today. I will say that this is for sure the pre-evolution to Zangoose, even though I think it's actually rather unlikely. Today, a magical video, the most desperate video I've ever seen, popped into my YouTube recommended, and here's what the title said. Top 10 new Pokemon in Pokemon Sun and Moon, and on the thumbnail, it had a picture of Solgaleo. I'm sorry, top 10 new Pokemon in Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. You gotta say Pokemon title as many times as possible. That way you get the keyword relevance and then you get as many views before people realize that there's nothing to the video. Really just hamming it off there on all the little things you can do to try to milk as much out of this non-content as possible. And the stench of douche that is emanating from this video is overpowering. Ugh. It's probably the trope of him using gameplay footage to substitute for actual graphics on the screen, with the exception of certain screen caps. Or maybe it's his condescending voice, and him exuding this I am privy to all YouTube knowledge mentality. Also, seriously? Non-content? I hope you said this ironically, considering it is both a self-contradictory label and is used to character assassinate. It's content, whether you like it or not, and deeming it as insignificant because it offers opposing viewpoints to yours is indicative of high levels of defensiveness. Those shields are definitely up and you're not even shameful. Please hide that from the kids, especially the majority of the 12 year olds that watch this video on the assumption that you're leafy or something. I mean, it's kind of hard to take this point seriously when your video was literally called, in all caps mind you, the most desperate video in the history of YouTube. I mean, if you want to point fingers, you may not want to be pointing into a mirror for as the mirror likes to point back and laugh. And while I'm on that point, what's wrong with him using the term Pokemon thrice in this video title? Sure, you could argue redundancy, but Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon are two separate games. It's not like he's doing anything really bad. Hell, you don't even need to look at this video. Looking at a lot of Verlissify's videos, they have clickbait titles and such to them. I don't care that you claim you don't do clickbait, you've done clickbait, anyone with half a brain can tell you have. Holy freaking crap, this video has two mid-roll ads and an in-roll? That's just milking it! So not only is the idea just super desperate, but his other videos have this as well. This is just proof that he's only doing popular, relevant content for the clicks, for the money, that this is taking more than you need for sure. Like, that's just abusing your fan base to get as much money as possible when you have two mid-rolls in a 10-minute video with an end roll. Oh my goodness. Huh. Hey, Hobbs, Doodle. Have you ever seen such blatant hypocrisy? Because looking at Verlissa's own 10 minute video, he has two ads, but considering he tends to upload two to three videos a day with near the same placement with each time, sure seems like you're milking the fans yourself. Not to mention, I can name up quite a few videos that are in his playlist that beat Dead Horse to Death. Lugia and Ho-Ho being the next cover legendaries for the newest games, the clouds in the Aloha map. This isn't a doc! Seriously, he gets on the case of one guy making a top 10 list that has a few ads that can easily be blocked, and when he can easily be considered doing the exact same thing with his upload rate. This, my friend, is what is known as the quintessential example of attempting to stand on a moral high ground to appear more reasonable than his detractor, as he accuses him of abusing the ad system, when of course uploading multiple videos at once with ads is just fine and dandy. Clearly, this is also projection on his part. Way to poison the waters with your phony self-righteousness. Hey, uh, may I bring up a question? What's wrong with him doing it for a little extra cash in the first place? I mean, it's not like he can't legitimately be curious as to what his viewers think about Pokemon at Sun and Moon and still want to keep income going. And somehow this video manages to play it safe in both sides. Like, oh yeah, this could be a thing that isn't this thing, but it's this thing. Fan service, fan service, fan service. I want your ad revenue because I don't have any ideas right now. The move disarming voice, and while that might not guarantee it will be evolving into a fairy type, it is rather peculiar that they would show off it specifically learning disarming voice, while the others are only shown learning some sort of signature moves featuring their typings. This absolutely blew my mind, because I was wondering what the thumbnail and title were trying to do. If you're thinking about something as clickbait, a clickbait title is something that lies about the content of the video to get you to click on it. But in this case, I was being clickbaited by a thumbnail that isn't clickbait in any way, because it, it absolutely broke me. There's no possible way that someone could be making a top 10 about the new Pokemon that have already been revealed in Pokemon Sun and Moon, right? I mean, there's only been 11. And what's wrong with covering that? Seriously, people can make top lists of whatever the subject they want. Who did and made you the arbiter of the top list rules? If someone like this broke you, then I have to seriously question you have a paper-thin ego than that head of yours. Also, it's not clickbait if the video is actually discussing a top 10 list. Which it is, because you have displayed evidence of that in your video. No, a clickbait video would be something like, MOST SEXY YOUTUBE VIDEO EVER! And when you click it, you see some doofus playing Overwatch talking about a video that he thinks is the sexiest video ever, and dragging on that topic for around 10 minutes. Hmm, I wonder who's guilty of that right now. So, who wants to play Hungry Hungry Hippos? Ooh, I rock at that game. 
But, uh, why bring it up now? Because he's being a hungry, hungry hypocrite. So that's, that means we were in a state with this community that the second we get t over 10 new Pokemon, because the last batch was in three, so that pushed us from eight to 11, someone goes and makes a top 10 about it. This is the most desperate attempt for views I have ever seen. Irony. I guess you would know all about that. Refresh my memory, Mr. Skull Common Griffin Man. Why is this guy influential in the Pokemon community again? I honestly haven't got a clue. It's one of the greatest mysteries of the world. Well, I hope Mulder and Scully confirm my theory that he's an extraterrestrial troll, because otherwise I am going to lose faith in the YouTube community for the 70,000th time before it's renewed by watching videos by CGP Grey and Geography Now, since they actually don't mislead for views. Or, if there's 11 new Pokemon revealed, let's talk about the Pokemon that did not make the top 10. Magearna. Oh my god, it's a top 11, so there's really nothing compelling about this video. Even if you're taking 11 of something and you rate it in a 1 to 10, you're at least providing some form of content, but this is no content whatsoever. You're saying, here's 11 Pokemon, but I'm going to call it a top 10 because that's going to get me more views. Do you not know how top 10 lists work? They're lists of Pokemon that are ranked in a subjective manner by the person making said video. It doesn't matter if there's a limitation in the subject matter. If he ranks them and provides reasons as to why that that specific number, then guess what? That's a top list right there and justified. Hell, you do it yourself. And really what you're arguing is something as minuscule as the number of Pokemon on this list. Honestly, as trivial as this is, I begin to wonder if you're here to actually do a leafy parody video on Jethro Tex, or if you're becoming blatantly obvious that you're trying to start a flame war as nitpicking all of Jethro Tex's individual flaws points me towards the latter. Was it really so hard just to call this a discussion? I'm not saying what you can and can't make videos about in the Pokemon community. You'll never find me! I have the power of invisibility! We need to start calling out people. We need to actually start going against unnecessary content. <laughs> oh wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> As we see, you want to police the Pokemon community by your own subjective standards. Who the hell died and made you the mob boss of the Poketuber community? Hey guys, I don't want to tell you what kind of videos to make, but hey, don't make these videos because they're obvious ploys for attention. Also, you need to rename any top 10 as a discussion video because I am delusional and have warped judgment. I have standards! Bow to me, peasant! But it feels like if you're not trying to soak as many views as possible out of all the hype content going on right now, I mean, you just call a discussion. You just talk about the new 11 Pokemon. You don't have to say top 10. You don't have to rate them and then talk about all these pitiful discussion points. Perhaps he wishes to number them by the ones he wishes to talk about the most. He can put them from 10 to 1 with an honorable mention as he climbs up to the favorite of his list. You can do that with really anything that's just now coming out. I mean, I know for certain I've seen several people who do that regarding Super Smash Brothers. Now, while yes, these things can and do quickly become outdated, that's not at all a place of complaint as you can always update it in full when the full list comes out. Exactly. Take, for example, all the videos talking about the supposed starters, and more recently, the two leaked Final Evolutions for the 7 Gen starters. Practically everyone and their mother who likes Pokemon made a video about them, including you, Wolfie Boy. We don't know if the leaks are real or not, but that doesn't stop you from talking about them. And if I can go off on a tangent, Pablo's leaked Final Evolution looks awesome! You can actually go and look into them in some detailed ways instead of trying to be funny to be like, Huh, <laughs> top 10, I'm gonna talk about some Pokemon right now, even though we only have 11. Oh wait, it's a top 11 video anyways. It's so silly, not to mention that some of the points are really dumb to talk about and just drag on for no reason. So you're angry at his arbitrary number for countdowns, and then get onto his case for having discussion points. Why? You're literally being the most petulant thing I have ever seen! This is exactly why I have an issue with speaking superficially. Acting like you are the grand authority on Poketuber videos, even though you claim it's not your intent, destroys any credibility your video has. No one is able to take you seriously if you whine about the most picayune of details, including the fact that he selected a round number for a countdown. Shut up. I think it's a very sleek way to combine a dog with the rock typing. Unlike Snubble, who's just a pink fairy, I guess. That normal type Pokemon that then became fairy that was always pink to begin with, and Lillipup, the normal type Pokemon that isn't rock even though it's brown, I mean, this is just reaching by talking about colors and not even doing a discussion, so this can't even be called a discussion. The only way this video can justify itself is by being just a stupid top 10. Someone's taking this video uber serious. In that little snippet you showed, he doesn't even talk about coloring. If he did, then bad on you for not doing proper editing to show your point. Even then, it's his video, he can talk about whatever he wants. 
If you can make 11 videos practically bring up the same regurgitated information, what's wrong with him talking about this? Not only that, but even if he was talking about the colors of the Pokemon, how does what you say at all debunk his point? Since he basically brings up the fact that Snubble is a pink fairy and not a rock dog like Rockruff, basically bringing up the fact that Snubble has nothing going for him mixing with its species with its typing, and you using Lillipup shows you're missing the point of your own straw man as Lillipup is supposed to look like a normal dog, and lo and behold, it does. Color or not, try again. You, uh, following any of this, Hobbs? I may have to stretch my understanding to grasp your points, but at least I don't let everything fly over my head like what Verlis is doing. Another pristine demonstration of thinking superficially, brought to you by the guy who was not bothered enough to edit out his breathing before cutting to the source video. Shoddy indeed. Oh my gosh, it's so nicely around, like, holy crap, I asked for a volleyball for Christmas? You know what? This is even better. Oh my goodness, the video is also 10 minutes long. That means you're just doing so you get higher ad revenue, because that's just the facts. Every YouTuber knows that once you hit over 10 minutes, you get the choice to throw in mid-roll ads, and you get more revenue per view. So, this video just drags on, doesn't it? Oh, hello, Mr. I am allowed to ramble while playing a video game. I am so thrilled by the fact that you cannot even address the contents of his video, but rather make ridiculous tangential observations to paint the user as a terrible, money-hungry person. That's called character assassination, buddy. And ad hominem because apparently he deliberately increased the length of his video just so he could get mid-roll ads. Any proof of this or are we supposed to uncritically accept your hasty observations? By the way, his video demonstrates a proficient level of editing and it complements his narration. Get out of here with your video game stock footage and your pointless interjections that lengthen your video and waste our time. You're doing exactly what you're accusing this user of, Jackass Supreme. Even if it was doing it for the purposes of money, I still have to ask why that's a bad thing. I mean, can technical support not help people out with technical issues if they want money for it? Can construction workers not build if they expect to get paid? Can game developers not make the Pokemon in Overwatch you seem to love because they too wanted money? What's the issue with people doing what they want to do for cash? Wh where does the issue stem from? For the Savai, buddy, please fill me in on how this is a bad thing. Also, isn't your own video 10 minutes long? Kinda seems off-putting since you're essentially calling him up for something that you yourself are guilty of. Especially when you put ads on this video, too. So the same does apply here. Oops, an accident occurred. Please shut your computer down and allow Windows to fix the problem forever. But I'm unsure as to how they will add more of the grass typing onto Rowlet, and that excites me. Okay, I'm gonna give the video the benefit of the doubt. Maybe... It's a troll video. Maybe it's meant to be entertainment. Maybe it's maybe it's not trying to take itself seriously whatsoever. No! What clued you in, Sherlock? The fact that he'll take a rallet and substitute for a fucking volleyball? Of course it's a video for the purposes of entertainment. Either quit being stupid or drink egg whites. It's called cracking jokes, you know. Something to entertain your viewers. I realize it's a foreign concept to you since you tend to stick to overblown arguments, putting yourself on a pedestal and complaining about how a dream ball actually has significance on a battle. Perhaps if you took off those rose-colored spectacles for a grand total of one millisecond, you would probably come to the realization that, whoa, maybe I did the exact same thing in my videos. Unless you have no sense of humor, though this video indicates a voluntary suspension of it, either make substantial points or stop wasting our time. Spoilers, that continues. Is what counts as premium content in the Pokemon community. Now we can go and just talk about for so long on how stupid content starts going that you see one pixel out of place in a trailer that someone's gonna make a theory video about it. That if you see any kind of list to be made that there's a top 10 waiting, that people are overanalyzing just for the views when it comes to community. Oh my Arceus, are you serious about this? Common, calm down, everything will be fine. No need to rip one's head from the dog collar. Or what? I'll be plagued with Verlis Syndrome? This guy does this all the time with his videos! For example, like I said before, talking about the clowns in the Loma's map being references to legendary Pokemon, or how a symbol dot could lead to an underwater city, which he's made multiple videos about both topics. But don't you know, Common, if dost thou protest against the great Velocifier, they'll be smitten down with the great wrath of dog collars and silly furry headphones. I don't care if Argus himself- <laughs> I heard you on that commentators keep using my name in vain. And the content is so oversaturated, everyone just rips ideas off of each other. You know, it's like, oh, I came up with this theory, even though I took it from Reddit. Oh, I'm gonna have to make a top 10, and then a top 10, and then a top 10, because that's what's going to get the most views. And I mean, this is this is the kind of content, this is the kind of video that is making the Pokemon community some of like the worst, most unentertaining stuff right now, that people are complaining about this. I don't understand how this video is getting away with what it's doing. And then people are probably gonna be mad at me for reacting to this video in such a way. I mean, you can call me a Leafy clone all that you want. Look at this Hanzo game going on. I went off on this Hanzo game and I didn't record any like audio, I was just too focused to talk. So I need to find a way to throw this video in somewhere. I mean, what the fuck I'm doing? Oh my god, this sidetrack is the most pointless thing I have ever covered. And that's saying a lot when you take into account I've been called the Leafy of the CC. What the hell is going on? 
What is this anymore? Either way, I did a Twitter poll. Over two thirds of the people that saw the title and have watched the video decided that this is absolutely unnecessary content. Just because people agree with you, that doesn't mean you're right. Argumentative mad populism is a thing, you know. And again, we see you repeat to yourself that it's pointless content. Repetition is a sign of lack of reasonable arguments. Are you ever going to tackle the video in question, or is this entire video just you bitching to waste time and to sound relevant at a time where your popularity is being called into question? I'm starting to think it's the latter. Sad. Okay, so let's just say for the sake of argument that you are factually correct. This was pointless content that should have never been made. Couldn't you make the same argument with literally every YouTube video in existence? I mean, it's not like YouTube videos are required. It's not like any YouTube video has a point that can't also be done in a way that's not online through a computer screen. So what the fuck's your point, you fucking scrub lord? I think that that's the point we need to get to. We need to start calling out people. We need to actually start going against unnecessary content. And the thing is, I feel at least all of my content is necessary in some form. Oh, oh the ego! ego! All right, call out unnecessary content then. Bro, Lucify, I'm calling you out, you yiffing piece of trash. Your ego is too big for Jupiter. Nothing you've said up to this point has been valid, much less necessary to say. You're basically pinning all the blame on literally everyone else but you, because you know you have nothing of substance. You know, there's a word that is totally relevant here. Flossinosinellipilification, the action or habit of estimating something as worthless. Ugh, that's a sexy ass word. My inner word maven is pleased. Greatly. Uh, but anyways, assuming that all of your videos are inherently necessary is proof that you have zero idea of the difference between a subjective viewpoint and an objective observation. It seems a lot of people who cover video games and other niche culture have a glaring issue making such a distinction. So let me do it for you. Your assigning of your videos as necessary is subjective, and having your fans act as an echo chamber will make no difference. Give me detailed reasons as to why you think your Poketuber videos deserve viewership supremacy, and I will concede defeat. Otherwise, quit being such an obnoxious, self-righteous, pusillanimous twat. I wish I didn't lose my word of the day calendar. You guys blew me out of the water. Oh well, might as well go simple. IRONY! Seriously, one look at your video shows that you often make repetitive content. Pokemon in the clouds, duck that's supposed to leave the under city, is anyone else getting deja vu by this point? Seriously, you're acting like the godfather of Poketubers. Listen, you come to YouTube looking to make videos, but you make this? You bring me this content? You disgust me. Now put on these dog ears and stun up a howl. A quiet, you'll start a- oh. <laughs> With the Smogon videos, you know, it's starting to get people to think critically that it gives a place for non-Smogon players to actually feel welcome. IRONY! Same with VGC, that there's a majority of cheaters in the Pokemon community, which is one of the most baffling things. If you don't, if you have somehow not come from the Pokemon community, you're watching this video because you find it entertaining, and you don't know anything about Pokemon, you don't know anything about my channel, I follow the rules in Pokemon, and that gets people upset because the majority of the Pokemon community breaks the rules and thinks it's okay. Which rules did they break? The burden of proof is on you. Aside from shiny Pokemon do not exist and right you shouldn't be in a dream ball which is used for aesthetics, I fail to see or have heard of any of these rule-breaking examples you speak of. Speaking as someone who falls into the category of not being too familiar with either Pokemon or your videos, though for the latter part that should not be such a disadvantage, you give off such a terrible first impression. If I wanted to immerse myself in such topical videos on YouTube, I would more than likely watch one or two of your videos, then refrain from watching any more, because you seem to give off a smug sense of superiority. Saying that you're a stickler for the rules, and acting so self-serving to the point where you dismiss other people's videos as non content means to me that you're not willing to discuss things civilly and you're willfully ignorant. I really hope you know the impact of being a clueless dolt on YouTube, including the eventual alienation of newer and older viewers from your video content. Also, oh, that's a bit of a misleading statement right there. You're hated because you follow the rules? No, you're hated because you like to start witch hunts and have openly insulted people without any provocation. Tamashi is a cam girl? Or how about when you decided to generalize a whole group of fans of one Pokemon generation and label them as whiners? Yeah, you're only hated for playing honesty. Great, this color's suffocating my sarcasm. Wow, Common, is that what you like to do at furry conventions, you sick son of a bitch? Kink shame mode activated! But what if kink shaming is his king? Oh my... So I'm here to say, hey, no, because no one else has done it. They encourage that behavior because it gets them more views, just pandering to the community. That's why I feel this does. This is just abuse 
of just viewership and stuff. Because it's like, oh yeah, just top 10 Pokemon Sun and Moon. Anyone's going to click on it. And we're just going to list off all the Pokemon that have been revealed and not provide any discussion or any kind of legitimate kind of video idea going on. Wait, no discussion? No video idea? But, but, but what about the shit you just showed us from Jethrotex? You were purposely trying to manipulate your audience, and it sickens me. I haven't listened to a puppeteer this fucking retarded since Jeff Dunham. Doodle doodle doodle, don't you know? This is Burless Logic. As the third top Poketuber in the world, he knows what he's talking about and isn't going to do an ass pull just to cause drama and get more clicks and views to his channel. If anything, this video falls into his personal definition of non-content because all he is doing is provoking another user for no discernible reason other than claiming his top 10 is clickbait. Clearly not a sign of Freudian projection, am I right? I mean, when we do commentaries, we're not only provocative, but we also explain why we believe certain videos are the pits. This guy is the living definition of a faulty record player. Not only that, but he's a walking paradox. He claims Jethro Tex's video is content designed for free cash and then turns around and say it's no content at all. It's like, jeez man, can you go any lower? Is there a bottom for you to hit? I must know! He's a walking contradiction and he ain't got no right. Sorry, Chris Reagan, I love you. Jeez, Hobbs, put that body pillow of Chris Reagan away! Kink shame for kink shame. Too freaking shay. Right. I mean, that's the thing about criticism. I'm just here to kind of go and show what I think is wrong in the Pokemon community because we just let all this really stupid stuff slide. You can agree, you can disagree. Cool, do your thing, but I think people start taking it way too far. I mean, we're at the point where this is Pokemon content right now, and I think that it is just absolutely mind-numbingly dumb. I mean, every, all my friends I show this to think it's stupid. All, a lot of people on Twitter have agreed with this, and now I'm just trying to figure out what do we do from here? That uh, With Pokemon Sun and Moon, more content coming out, more just abusive behavior. Look, at this point, I know asking Verlissify to give proof is like asking for fantasy-style transformation magic to exist, but honestly, abusive behavior? From who? You're basically spewing out verbal diarrhea at this point, and frankly, I have to ask you to cut it out because I desperately do not want E. coli. So either shut up or actually give us something to go off of, please. This guy says a lot within this minute, so let's see if I can unpack all of this concentrated madness. For one thing, if you think his video represents the nadir of the Pokemon community, look at yourself, bub. If it has gotten to the point with you that you need to start unnecessary fights over fictional issues you have with other people's content, then I think you have reached a personal low. Second, just because you showed this video to your friends and your echo chamber that you call your Twitter followers and agreed does not mean that your evaluation of this video is the end-all be-all. Your viewpoints are not universal, contrary to your own self-belief. This is why I'm okay with, you know, all the other Poketubers hating me. This is why I don't care what most of them think, because I'd rather not support this kind of stupid content. Oh! Ow! My favorite point of any YouTube video, the I don't care so much I made a video showing how much I don't care point. It's fun because it's a self-refuting argument that shoots itself in the foot with that nice bow you have there. Yeah, that's why after this video you made two overblown videos that were pitiful attempts to refute another higher level Poketuber, Hoodlum Scrafty, which certainly wasn't a waste of time, energy, and didn't make you look so desperate to maintain face. Seriously, get off that pedestal. You're going to get struck by lightning by holding that metal rod you call drama. I do not believe for one second that you don't care if other people dislike you. If you didn't care, why did you make response videos to multiple Poketubers only to say they're wrong and they're lying? Again, insert obvious Green Day reference here. You're merely saying this to posture around and act like you have balls of steel when really they're just dried Brillo pads. No one believes your act, pal. I'd rather just be in my own little bubble because, I mean, after that, everyone just starts stealing ideas off of everyone else. At least I'm isolated. At least I'm doing my own thing. Your own thing? You obtuse little turd. What you're doing now is a Leafy's hairstyle video doing nothing but lamenting over trivial points that mean nothing in the grand scheme of things. It gets worse when you realize that you were called out so you claimed parody as a way to damage control the situation. Just fall off a stepladder into a pit full of killer marshmallows that hail from the pits of hellfire. Please? Damn! Well, if your own thing is to be the self-proclaimed arbiter of what is necessary, then keep being self-ingratiating, and others will continue to refute your points and the legitimacy of how necessary your videos are. So hey, keep up the superior content, jackass! And my audience can be happy with that, so if you guys are watching this, that's why I do what I do, and I guess this has kind of gone to a whole nother discussion off the side of whatever the hell this video is. There is no way I can think anyone in their right mind sees this as legitimate content. That the only thing I see this as is a desperate view grab 
for views. Because Yo, calling all mental defectives. That means you, Felicify. You could say that with every YouTube video in existence. How about you quit complaining that people are doing videos for views? Literally, all of us are guilty of it. It may be true that all of us create content for views, but some people painstakingly put effort into the videos to garner viewership. This piece of content from Verlicify is a more obvious view grabber because he is trying to divert attention from Jethro Tex to him, only for such viewers to find that the entirety of his points are This is Nyan Kan Kan, you can wake a can. This is what we describe as a lack of effort, unfortunately. Because he ran out of ideas or something. We haven't, you know, it's, it's a long stretch when you go from month to month without Pokemon news. That You can see a lot of PokeTubers get desperate throughout times of drought and stuff. Oh, you mean how like you like to stir up dust whenever there's not a lot going on, such as when attacking other PokeTubers, getting on people's cases, or calling people cheats and hacks, when the damn Pokemon company itself has already decided that they are small, trivial things. So why not make it to that next little batch of news and that next little update with some of the stupidest video I've ever seen? Like, it's not even a parody. It takes itself too seriously. It drags on too long, even if there's jokes inside of it. Like, that's how you keep people inside of the top ten. You make jokes. You make content. But this, this is dull. This Look at your fucking reflection, Verlicify, because if this is the dumbest idea you have ever seen, odds are you don't watch your own content, which wouldn't at all surprise me, really. Because a video where you talk about a discussion video, talking about how worthless the discussion video is without having any self-awareness that your video is not any better is hands down the fucking dumbest thing I have ever seen. Doodle. Have you seen Verlis? All his mirrors crack when he walks past them! Not even mirrors! Puddles, shiny objects, anything! Damn! Didn't think we're turning this commentary into a packing session. Yikes! Eh, too much salt for my tastes. This is dull. This this is just the dumbest idea I've ever seen. And I'm ashamed that this is where content has become for Pokemon Sun and Moon, for the Pokemon community. And I under, like I feel that everything that gets put on YouTube deserves to have a purpose. And this provides nothing you know there was once a commentator who said the following wise word no you i think that we're going to leave it there so if you guys enjoy this video hope you all have a nice day thank you very much for watching primo gameplay huh it's, it's official, official. You suck. Especially since some people have told me that you actually play Hanzo pretty much the same way as anyone else and you don't do it well. Okay, final thoughts, boys and girls. Let me come right out and say it. Verlicify, you are a despicable, reprehensible, petulant child who can't accept the fact that maybe, just maybe, people have the fucking right to do what they want on their channels. You seem to be in a six-year-old retarded mindset where you sit there, look at other people's content, and basically spout, Nigga, please, you're only doing this for the publicity! With having literally no self-awareness to the fact that you go around starting shit with other people and tuck that tail that I guarantee you have in your closet where you tend to dwell between your legs and cower when anyone dares call you out on your disgraceful, pitiful hogwash that your viewership has literally no reason to take seriously, yet somehow do enough to keep you up as one of the bigger YouTubers that do Pokemon content. I mean, fuck, I get it! The fame got to your head and your ego inflated so big that you needed to put it somewhere! But did you really have to shove it up your own ass? Alright, I got that out of my system, you guys go next. You, uh, need some water or something? Yeah, I think... I think I'm gonna go get a drink. Hey guys, this is Verlicify, welcome to Poke Drum Alert Nation! But in all seriousness, I cannot take your video seriously. Your main thrust of this particular video was to call attention to someone that you perceived had problems, and he never fully addressed what they were, aside from making tangential and irrelevant observations about his mid-roll ads and the fact that he made a list consisting of top 10 Sun and Moon Pokemon. I am not sure about your standards, but at this point I feel with this video and with other content you have released, you are grasping for the lowest common denominator to elicit reactions from everyone. It destroys your credibility because you clearly have no bar to reach and no clear reason to make high quality videos. What you accomplished with this video was to make a PokeTuber analog of a high schooler spreading false rumors in an attempt to save face with his click. And that's how I envision the PokeTuber community to be. Very divisive, very combative, and overall full of drama and cancer. I'm sure that a lot of people are willing to make constructive content, and I'm sure the community at times is wonderful and full of edifying dialogue, but your video, Verlicify, is simply blood sport. Contributing to the drama only makes it worse, but since you care more so about yourself and absolving yourself from all blame, that's not how you see it, right? Well, Verlis, this is my third video on you, and what can I say about you that hasn't already been said? And is another pot shove against how you're furry. 
Well, in all honesty, after seeing a lot of your BS in the Pokemon community and how you've reacted to criticism, I'm almost tempted to say your maintaining popularity is honestly the eighth wonder of the world, with your more recent videos even saying you don't want people to sub to you if they disagree with you on a single point, or how you block people on Twitter if they challenge anything you say unless you know they're big enough to cause a stir. Seriously, I'd give advice, but since I've already been blocked by you on Twitter, I'm a little too salty to really give two bones about whether or not you're actually approved or not. TLDR, stop pulling this crap, it's getting boring at this point.